Call to order. Miss Lynette Cook will say the pledge, and I believe someone from St. Thomas More say the. Uh, I mean, Miss Lynette say a prayer, and I believe someone from uh, St. Thomas More to say the prayer. Mr. Mayor, you still have someone to say the pledge? Okay, Mr. Nakin, mind saying the pledge? Not at all. And Mr. Nakin, say the pledge allegiance. We gather together here today intent on doing good work. We seek to represent fairly and well those who have given us this task. May our efforts be blessed with insight, guided by understanding and wisdom. We seek to serve with respect for all. May our personal faiths give us strength to act honestly and well in all matters before us. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Ms. Cook and Mr. Nakane. We welcome you to the Lafayette City Council meeting. As presiding officer and chair, I would like to announce the following. This is a public hearing. To address the council on any item on this agenda, please fill out the request form and submit it to the clerk prior to the call of the agenda item, or you will not be given the opportunity to speak. Staff assistance is available if needed. Items for submission to the council should be handed to council clerk, Ms. Veronica Williams, seated to my left in the middle. When addressing the council, state your name and title for the official record the five minute rule will be in effect. No debating or confrontational statements will be allowed. The front row to my left is for media only. Food and drinks are not allowed in the auditorium. Please silence all phones and electronic devices. Meeting procedures are resolutions and not by Robert rules of order. All documents with reference to meetings can be found on LCG website. And finally, the council encourages your involvement in boards or commissions. If interested, please call 291-8800. The chair has no announcement. Uh, is there any announcements from the council? Yes, sir. Mr. Nakan. I just wanted to make note of some things coming forward to the Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, in particular, we have the youth baseball, baseball and softball uh, registration has begun. Um, it's going now through uh, Sunday, March 1st. Uh, baseball ages 5 to 14 and softball ages 7 to 17. I encourage you to contact the Parks and Recreation Department if you have a child you would like to register to play either baseball or softball this summer. Also, uh, the uh, uh, rainbow program is back. I thought everybody would like to know that for those who might want to collect their rain. <laughs> um, the rain barrels are available for $38 on limited supply. Um, those people outside of Lafayette's jurisdiction, the city of Lafayette and or residents who may want a second one can get them for $49. Uh, this can be uh, registered through April 5th and collection will be April 18th at the Dean Domain Compost Facility on Dugout Road. Also, the Gerard Park Recreation Center has a, uh, a Stretch for Kids uh, growth program. Uh, this is Thursdays from 4.30 to 5.30. Uh, Gerard Park Recreation Center is for children ages 5 to 14 years old, if anybody's interested. It's $35 a month. Uh, please contact the rec center over there at Gerard Park if interested. And there's another one I thought was very interesting was the, uh, through the rec uh, Parks and Recreation, we have the American Sign Language classes. I think that's a wonderful program. Uh, Mondays from 6.30 to 7.30 at the Thomas Park Recreation Center on Geraldine Drive. It's for adults and children, uh, $60 a month. Please contact the uh, rec center over there. And two more to go. Uh, at the Como Rec Center, we have uh, aerobics classes. Goodness knows I need that. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, uh, 5.45 to 6.45, uh, so all adults. And also they have karate classes, uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. This is for adults and children. So children, you have a chance to beat up on your parents. Um, this is $50 a month or 110 for three months. So contact the Thomas Park, uh, excuse me, the Como Recreation Center for that. And thank you very much, Chair. Yes, sir. 
Ms. Cook. Uh, yes, I just I didn't want to steal the mayor's thunder, but are you going to announce about the LUS audit at this meeting as well? I, I, I would maybe ask that you did since it's a city, since LUS is really city, if we could maybe get that for those people that maybe that just tuned in for this meeting. Um, and if you want to do that during announcements, I'll, I'll wait for that. So thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor's report. You have the floor, Mr. Mayor. All right. Uh, well, first, let me thank Councilman Nakian. That was, uh, I'm glad you did that. That was, that was good, because we have a lot of good things going on in the city and the parish, so thank you for, for highlighting that. A lot of hard work in our, in our Parks and Recreation Department and in other departments within LCG, so thank you for doing that. Um, Council, uh, Councilwoman Cook, uh, thank you for, for highlighting that. I, I think it would be healthy for us to do. And I'll turn to Ms. Toops. Um, again, just for, for those that are just joining our meeting at the Joint Council meeting, we discussed the, L, L, uh, the LUS audit, uh, the forensic audit that we will be initiating and we'll have a contract, or excuse me, we'll have a um, discussion with the Professional Services Committee this Thursday. And what we had mentioned earlier was uh, basically a discussion on whether we should go back three years, whether we should go back 10 years and some cost variances that Ms. Toops could talk about. And the consensus was that we'll start with three years and then there's no harm in, in doing that and seeing determining whether we want to go five, seven, ten years back. But Ms. Toops, if you could um, add to the discussion in regards to cost. Sure. The cost for a three-year forensic audit is $80,000, and that includes two years' worth of attestation audits. The attestation audit usually runs around $10,000. So the three-year forensic audit with the two years attestation would be 80, not to exceed 80,000. And to go back 10 years would be not to exceed 118,000. Most of the folks uh, interested in doing this, their first reaction along with our mayor president was let's just do the whole thing so that way we'll have it all done and get it done in one shot. I have a little bit of concern because of records retention if the audit work that the auditor does relies on physical invoices, because we do process physical invoices every day, we have uh, people in the, in the different departments initial them and sign off on them. Well, if the primary work is on those physical invoices, then our records retention policy only goes back so far. It doesn't go back to the beginning of fiber. It might go back five or six years that we have the physical invoices. If his work is more closely related to what's in the accounting ledgers and on the computer systems and Excel files, then we will be able to go back all the way to the beginning because we do have all those. So there's really no harm in letting him get started with the first three years. That will be the contract that we enter into him, the contract for the first three years. Although I'm going to the professional service committee um, with a, a, a not to exceed 118,000 in case it is determined after discussion, after he re, uh, does his work and we inform you of the progress of his work, if it's determined, yes, we need to go back, uh, then we would still have room to do so. And what we're gonna, where we're gonna start the three year period with is in the year where these um, allegations first came to light, these potential problems, and that was in uh, 2018, so we'll go do 2018, 2017, and 2016, and uh, see how that progresses. Mr. Mayor, you still have the floor. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair, and again, thank you, uh, Councilwoman, I appreciate that. It doesn't hurt to have more, uh, too much discussion, so thank you for that. Um, Mr. Chair, I do have a proclamation on behalf of our, our government, our city. Okay. And I believe, um, Mr. William Romero, or, hey William, all right, is Liam, I don't think Liam's here. Okay, all right, so Mr. Romero, if you could receive this proclamation our, our, on behalf of the council and the administration, we'd appreciate this. Uh, whereas, there are more than 7,000 diseases and conditions considered rare, and they affect an estimated 30, 30 million people in the United States according to the National Institutes of Health. And whereas, rare diseases can be life-altering conditions that often have no discovered medical cure, and whereas we acknowledge that people with rare diseases and their families encounter a variety of challenges, including access to medical care, physical and mental hardship, as well as the associated financial burden, and whereas 
Citizens with rare diseases are entitled to the same rights and freedoms as any other citizen, including the right to dignity and respect as they work to obtain their fullest physical, mental, social, vocational, and economic potential. And whereas providing a platform of discussion and acknowledgement that those with rare diseases are not alone in their personal adver adversities. And whereas Lafayette Consolidated Government, as well as the Mayor President's Awareness Committee for Citizens with Disabilities, recognizes the significance of this rare leap day and uses it as an opportunity to promote awareness for those with rare diseases. Now, therefore, I, Josh Guillory, Mayor President of Lafayette Consolidated Government, do hereby proclaim the 29th day of February in the year of our Lord. 2020 as Rare Disease Day. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the Lafayette Consolidated Government to be affixed this 18th day of February, 2020. All right. Mr. Chair, that concludes my executive mayor president's report. Thank you. Move along. Comments from the public. <coughs> comments from the comments from the public on any other matters not on an agenda. Ms. Williams, do you have any public comments? Yes, sir. We do have speakers signed in. We have three speakers. The first of which is Takuna El Shabazz, and he will be followed by Dewan Zendra Smith. This is time to speak on about topics relative to the city of Lafayette that are not included as agenda items. You are reminded the five minute rule will be in effect. No debating or confrontation of statements will be allowed. Good evening. I am Takuna Milana El Shabazz and I'm author of the book Black I Am Cajun Creole I Am Not. The word Cajun and nigger are historical slur twins. A long standing lie does not get more truthful with time. It simply seeks to impregnate time, to create baby lies for the purpose of producing protection and cover up for the original mother lie. I'm saying to you that black folks are not Cajuns never was and never could be and we're not niggers and if you know us as niggers it's because someone made us into niggers for over two over 32 years the black community has cried out black i am cajun creole i am not we ask for fairness we ask for reasonable dialogue we got none in fact the city amped up its propaganda. In fact, the city became bombastic in the promotion and, and proliferation of Cajun Acadiana. Today we have witnessed the worst foretold predictions. Little black children don't want to be black and African anymore. They want to be Cajuns or Creoles, cousins to Cajuns. We got black men and women, some of the most talented ones among us, don't want to acknowledge that they're black and African. They go along to appease the system. They feel economic pressures to fit in and to be accepted. You have weaponized the lack of knowledge that's been producing black people against black people. So today you have arguments in the black community don't know whether you're black, don't know whether you're Cajun, don't know whether you're Creole. And some of the most talented ones among us organized Creole Incorporated, which serve as a symbol and a signal to our children that it's okay to be Creole. It's okay to engage in self-hatred. The concept Creole comes from the word Crowler, which means it's a Portuguese word which means one 
whose slave was born in the master's house. He's a domesticated Negro. So I'm here today to tell you that it is very clear that the selfish promotion of Cajun Acadiana is essentially a government-funded modern-day nigger-making process for black people. If you, all, if you all black athletes are rich and Cajun, then black birds are white dove. We accuse the city, and I make it very clear, I'm asserting that the city is guilty of taxation without representation, cultural genocide, cultural terrorism, fostering black culture genocide, misuse and abuse of public funds, nurturing the concept of white supremacy, black economic exploitation, historical and cultural privacy, piracy, and the insensitivity and racist behavior toward most non-white citizens. The black community position has never been to be anti-Cajun, where it always was relegated to a position of un-Cajun, simply means we're not Cajuns. It would be unintelligent for us to resist the people who seek self-determination to be seeking self-determination ourselves. That is an unintelligent position. But given, given the current reality and the position that we have taken in the past must be revisited, must be reevaluated, for there is no fairness in the city, economically, politically, and educational. And the value of our children is more important than the political games that are being played. Black I am, Cajun Creole I'm not, is a book which details our cry, our need to have some address from the city. We have given up on that. That's not coming, so we must do it ourselves. I don't live in Acadiana. There is no such place. That's a made up word. That's somebody who misspelled Acadian. Black I am, Cajun Creole, I'm not. Next speaker, Dewan Zindra Smith, followed by the final speaker, Wallace Senegal. Good evening, council members, mayor president, Mr. Guillory. I am attorney Dewan Zindra Smith. I am a candidate for the 15th Judicial District Court, Division D. That is the seat that is currently held by Judge Rubin, who will be retiring this year. Just wanted to inform the public about this race and about several other judicial races that will be on the November 3rd ballot. And I'm asking for everyone's support for information on my campaign. You can visit my webpage at dwaforjudge.com. That is D W A F O R J U D G E dot C O M. I look forward to meeting all of my constituents on the campaign trail, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions that anyone has now or after the meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Final speaker, you. Wallace Senegal. Good evening, uh, Council, uh, Mayor President, and all involved. I think we had a little, not a little, but we had a whole lot of black history tonight, huh? Black History Month, and we got what we needed to hear. You know, the reason why I'm really here right now, you know, is to win a new decade, win a new, uh, year and I'm trying to kind of find out some things going on with community development and how community development <coughs> uh, block grant money is distributed throughout the city parish I asked this once before and never got an answer to it you know and it, it's a, it's a concern of mine because I've been watching, I've been coming to consolidated government meetings since 96 when it first was consolidated. I've seen a whole lot through community development and I've seen community development kind of like go away in certain communities that I feel I'm entitled to know what's going on with it. Uh, Councilman Lewis is my councilman, you know. 
Uh, I have spoke with him on that. He have gave me some good pointers on it, but I need to know uh, what is really going on with it and maybe change my thinking the way I'm thinking about it right now. I thank you guys for your uh, ears. Any more public comments? No, sir. Mr. Lazar. Uh, Mr. Chair, just a uh, just brief announcement. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I'm speaking out of turn. And, no, no, that's uh, okay. Fine. We've heard a lot of uh, talk about this being uh, Black History Month, and I certainly want to thank uh, the Director of Minority Affairs, Mr. Carlos Harvin, for the excellent presentation that he gave earlier. Uh, there have been events going on throughout the month, and they will continue. Uh, but there's one particular event that I'd like to bring to the public's attention, and that is the annual African American Heritage Foundation Awards Gala, which will be, which is usually held the uh, at the end of the month, and it's going to be on the February 29th at 6 p.m. Uh, at the Multi-Purpose Center at Holy at, uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church. Uh, this was started. This will be the 17th year. This was started by. Uh, our dear friend of ours, uh, trailblazer in our own right, Ms. Janelle Shagwa. Uh, so this year it will be, uh, I guess, in, in her memory, I guess, for lack of better terminology. Uh, that will be followed by the annual parade on Sunday, March 1st at 2 p.m. So just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Need any additional information, you can contact me, myself, or any member of the African American Heritage Foundation Committee. Uh, for any additional information, also seeking uh, some sponsorships uh, to pay not only for the function, but uh, continuous program, programming that's held throughout the year. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lazar, just uh, as far as the parade is held when? Sunday? Uh, Sunday. The Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, March 1st. Okay, and? It's going to begin at uh, J. Wallace James mm -hmm. and it's going to end at the Clifton Shinye Center. Okay, thank you. Let's move along. Resolutions. This is a public hearing and blue sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the council. The five minute rule does apply. Jeremy, please read item number six. City Resolution 6, 2020, a resolution of the Lafayette City Council authorizing the submission of an application with the Louisiana Commission on Law Enforcement for a 2019 Stop Violence Against Women Act grant for the Lafayette Police Department. Motion by Ms. Nanette Cook and second by Mr. Andy Nakin. Any council discussion? Okay. Ms. William, any public comments? No, sir. Need a vote from the council to adopt the resolution. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance for final adoption. This is a public hearing and blue sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the council. The five minute rule does apply. Jeremy, read item number seven, please. City Ordinance 12 2020. An ordinance of the Lafayette City Council declaring the building or structure located at 214 East 2nd Street, Lafayette, Louisiana, owned by Dorothy May Sherman McNeil, care of Gerald J. Block, attorney appointed to be dilapidated and dangerous to the public welfare and ordering the condemnation of same. Moved by Mr. Glenn Lazar, second by Mr. Andy Nakin. Any council discussion? Ms. William, any public Comments? No, sir. Need a vote. District mm -hmm. 2? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 1? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Introductory ordinance. Mike, move okay, Mr. Nye came to make a move for that. Yes, sir. Second by Ms. Nanette Cook. Jeremy, read item number 9, please. 
City Ordinance 13, 2020, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending the fiscal year 1920 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by transferring $12,000 from the air pack testing and repair project to the station maintenance project within the Lafayette Fire Department for additional funding needed. City Ordinance 14, 2020, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Council declaring the building or structure located at 1200 South College Road, Lafayette, Louisiana, owned by Kimlich B. Din to be dilapidated and dangerous to the public welfare and ordering the condemnation of same. <laughs> Any council discussion? Public comments, Ms. Williams? Yes, sir. Vote uh, introducing global for item eight through nine. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. Motion to introduce in Globo is approved. Adjourn the city council meeting. We have a meeting for the EDDs right after this meeting. Well, you can. We can move along right now. Everybody ready? Okay, we we'll take about a about a couple of minute break, right quick. You can stretch your legs out and talk for a few minutes. already I'm going to start the EDD huh yeah yeah okay I'm going to start it right now okay calling the ED meeting to order Chair, please have a roll call, a call roll, please. Lewis? Here. Nakan? Here. Hebert? Cook? 
Here. Lazard? Here. We have a quorum. Okay, Jeremy, read item number three. Board action, nomination of officers. This is a public hearing and blue sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the board. They need a nomination for the Downtown Lafayette Economic Development Board of Directors 2020 Chair. Yes, I'd like to nominate uh, Mr. Lazard. Board discussion? Public comments? Okay, let's call for the vote. Lewis? Mr. Lazard? Nakan? Yes. Cook? Lazard? Yes. Lazard is appointed chair. Okay. Nomination for our Downtown Lafayette Economic Development Board of Directors 2020 Vice Chair. Ms. Cook? I'd like to nominate Pat Lewis. Okay. Board discussion? Any public comments? Vote for the 2020 Vice Chair. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Lewis is appointed Vice Chair. Nomination for Downtown Economic Development Board of Directors, Secretary Treasurer. Uh, nominate uh, Annette Cook. Board discussion? Public comments? Okay. Vote for 2020 sec Secretary Treasurer. Lewis? Ms. Cook? Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Cook. Cook is appointed Secretary Treasurer. Jeremy Reed, I'm number, uh, what is it, number four. Board action, a resolution of the board electing officers and otherwise providing with respect thereto. Okay, I need a motion and second consideration and adoption of the resolution. Number R-006-downtown. Andy Nakin, I'm sorry, is uh, Lazard? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? 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 Who's your secretary? Okay, Mr. Lewis is the vice chair and Ms. Nanette Cook is the secretary. I need a motion to second to amend the resolution. To, to include the names of the newly elected officers. Board discussion on amendments? Okay, a move by Mr. Andy Nakan, second by Ms. Nanette Cook. Board discussions on amendment? No board discussion on amendment. Any public comments on amendment? Okay. Let's have a vote on the amendment for the resolution. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to amend is approved. We need a vote on the amendment the resolution to amend the resolution. Any board discussion? Public comment on the resolution as amended? Vote on the, to adopt as amended. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to adopt as amended is approved. Chairman, please read item number five. Public hearing. Public hearing on the downtown Lafayette Economic Development District's intent to levy and collect a 1% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property and on sales of services within the boundaries of the Downtown Lafayette Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the Downtown Lafayette Economic Development District 
commencing July 1st, 2020, and otherwise providing with respect thereto and the resolution providing for the same introduced at January 2nd, 2020 board meeting. Any public comment? Okay, so for um, all the DDD, e EDDs, Economic Development District, for all of them, we had 10 citizens who called into the council office in support of all the EDDs. We had three citizens who called in in opposition to the EDDs. We did have citizens who signed in who did not wish to speak in support we have 13 citizens signed in to support it, all EDDs, and we have four who signed in, did not wish to speak in opposition to all the EDDs. As far as the speakers go, um, I'm not sure if they wanna to speak to five or six, so when I call your name, some of them signed in for both. When I call your name, if you prefer to speak to six, just pass, say you wanna pass, cause you'll speak to number six but you're welcome to speak to five and six. Uh, Ross Little. Ms. 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 Madam Clerk, can I have Mr. Charles address the council first, please? Mr. Charles Landry, right there. Okay. Documents. Um, just to kind of recap, so everybody knows exactly where we are. Um, the CEA has been approved by the then city parish the EDD board, the prior EDD board approved the CEA um, as well, which document has been assigned by the uh, mayor, by the uh, chairman of the EDD and by what I refer to as the sponsoring organization, in this case, the Downtown Development Authority. Their role, just for clarification, their role is to help facilitate whatever projects might come uh, before you in the future. Um, where we are today is simply the implementation of the CEA that has already been agreed to. I wanna be very clear that the city, the, the four of you and with the addition of one more, um, as representatives of the city, um, you have no further role in this, your only role as the city council was to approve the economic development district. Everything from this point forward is before you and solely before you and solely within your discretion as the economic development district board, all right? So today what's before you is just the implementation of what has already been approved. And I also want to just reinforce one comment. The uh, sponsoring organization doesn't have any authority. Anything that comes before you to spend a dime of this money is solely up to you. It's not the sponsoring authority that controls any sort of projects. Anybody in the district could come before you and ask that you consider what the project is, why would the project be a benefit to the district, who is going to take the project on, how is that project going to be handled. You could say, I want competitive bidding or not, how the money is gonna be spent. I wanna make it so very clear that you are the sole arbiters of every dime that comes before um, uh, you as the district board. And I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, that you have. Mr. Nakia. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Who exactly are you representing? I was hired by the city to facilitate putting this together. So you, I'm not representing you as a board. You have, that's a, that's a great question. You have full authority uh, going forward to hire your own attorney, to hire your own CPA, you have to get an audit. Mm -hmm. So that again is solely your authority. Importantly, in the documents that we have prepared uh, for this transaction, those administrative costs are priorities. Before, and in many of these cases, for example, downtown, you'll start collecting revenue 
if this passes almost immediately. So there will be funds available to your board to hire your own lawyer, to hire your own CPA, auditors, consultants, somebody comes to you with an idea, you can hire your own experts paying for it out of the EDD funds as a priority to evaluate anything before you. Okay, so you actually were hired by the city representing the EDD districts or? Putting the documents together for documents your consideration. Together. Okay, now out of curiosity, we had these taxes looming before us, which were not voted on by the citizens, which is set forth by our charter says that all sales taxes to be levied should be brought before the voters. That's in our charter. How do you speak to that? It's not applicable. That sales tax levied by the city, you're not the city. You are the economic development district. Your authority comes under the state legislation that authorizes you to levy sales tax, use taxes, hospitality taxes, as well as uh, property taxes, which are not relevant here. So, so this has nothing to do with your charter. You are not part of the city government. Well, who is paying the sales taxes? The businesses in the district. Collected under from state, whom? Collected uh, from whom? The businesses in the district under the who state. Who the business collect the money from? Uh, people who go and buy. Citizens of the city? Not necessarily. I, I, I'm or, be happy to have a tourists, restaurant. So whoever. Anybody who is in Correct. the district. So yes. we're, we levied a sales tax paid for by the citizens of the city that nobody voted on. That is the case in hundreds of EDDs all the way, th all around. And that makes it right. Oh, absolutely it does. Because it's done all over the place. Well, it's authorized by the legislature. That's their prerogative. And that makes it right. I agree. Uh, yes, sir, I, I agree. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, once these taxes start collecting and you have major projects coming forward, how is it paid for? Is it bonded out? No, sir, it's all up to you whether. The, so in the, other words, the Economic Development District can decide if they want to bond out any of these monies in front for a project moving forward. It, it could. That answers that question. It can happen, you know. Who's to say that, that 10 years from now, the next people who run the Economic Development District won't put the city in debt It's not the city in money. debt. That's absolutely well, correct, Well, if it's sir. a three-party contract and the city is one of the parties and is bonded out and someone defaults, no, who, sir. where is the city held responsible? The city is not responsible. That's why I started my comments with all due respect. The city has no further involvement with this whatsoever. The city's sole responsibility was to create the economic development district. It is up to you to decide how the money is spent. You, under the state legislation, have the right, if you wish, and rarely is it done. It was done very successfully um, for the Louisiana Avenue EDD, which is considered one of the premier, most successful EDDs in the state, that they actually, the EDD board, uh, issued bonds. But that's not the typical way it's done. Somebody will come to you with a project and they will say, I'd like to do this project for $100,000 they will find the financing, they will take it out of their back pocket, and then the EDD board will decide if they like the project and how they like the project and how they like the project implemented, how to pay for that project. You could say, I'm gonna pay you $100 a month for the, until the $100,000. You can say, we have 100,000, we like this project. The city has no responsibility, period on anything that you do. You don't have any responsibility, period, unless you elect to issue. If bonds are issued down the road, which they likely could be, but they take on a major project, judging by the taxes that come in, and you're saying the city has no responsibility. No, zero. But yet they have signed their name to the Con Cooperative Endeavor Agreement. That only, only Sir, with all due respect, I'll say it one more time. The only role the city has is to create the EDD. It has no authority to levy any attack, any tax, period. No authority to levy any tax. Two, no authority to spend a dime of your money. No authority to influence how that money is spent. It's you. Many EDD boards in, in this state, there are about 50 of them, 
are created by the legislature, and the reason why is they have a different governing body than you have as the city of, of Lafayette. That's not what we're doing here. The city council as individuals are your board, and they as the board of the EDD, not as city council members, make 100% of those decisions, and there is zero, zero responsibility of the city of Lafayette, zero. Um, it's hard to believe considering there is an agreement there signed by three parties. For instance, the uh, bottle loss. Um, we have already um, a situation where the city is gonna put up $1.4 million toward that over 40 year loan with no interest. And I assume that's gonna be supported by the CDD. Um, am I correct in saying that? No, no that's there's no, nothing, one no, is nothing no, no, that's, the other. that's no. not correct. All right. No, that's not correct. All right. well, that's, no, that's, nothing has been supported by anything. All right. It's up to the five of you going forward to make decisions on big, little, large project, who, what, when, where, how, and most importantly, why. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes to you with a project, the first question you're gonna ask is, why would we do that? What are we gonna do? When are we gonna? All those questions are to be answered to your satisfaction. If you're not satisfied, you're not going to approve a dime. That's all I have for right now, thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other council member have any input? See, there's none right now. Let's move along, Ms. Ms. Uh, Williams. And this is the public hearing item. Yes. We do have another item following this one. So we have nine speakers signed in. I'm gonna ask for each to see, and I'm gonna also ask on the next item. Ross Little, do you wanna speak to the public hearing? Okay. He will be followed by Greg you wanna Walls. Speak now? You wanna speak now? Um, my name's Ross Little Jr. I live here in Lafayette. Um, I currently serve as a member of the Lafayette Parish Republican Executive Committee, which I have for several times. I also serve as a member of the Louisiana Republican State Central Committee, which I've served for 32 years. And I'm a member of the Republican National Committee representing the state of Louisiana, which I have done for the last 16 years. This country was founded upon other things, no taxation, without representation. Now, in the agenda you have today, uh, you've got something to do at each one of these items. Right after this public hearing, it's board action. You have the decision as to whether or not to adopt a resolution of the board authorizing the levy and collection of 1% sales and use tax. If you vote against that, then this tax this thing will not go forward, and I'm urging you to vote no. It is my understanding that it requires three out of five votes. That means three of you four must vote in favor of this thing for it to pass. If I'm wrong, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I have signed up to speak against all of these. In the interest of time, I'm only gonna speak this once, and I'm gonna try to be pretty brief. So I'm asking you for the fact that, and I've read the law, at least some years ago I read the law, and yes, they can do this without a vote of the people, but no, it is wrong, it is not right. And you have the ability, the authority, right now to vote no. Because even though, yeah, I've read the state law, and I, I, I do know that, uh, but no, it's incorrect, it's wrong, Incorrect is the wrong, so I shouldn't have said that. I believe it's wrong, and y'all should all vote no. God bless you. That's all I have to say. Any questions or comments? Next speaker, Greg Walls. He'll pass to the next item. Eric Crozier. Eric will be followed by Jeremiah Seppel. Good evening, uh, Eric Crozier. I'm a downtown property owner and, and business owner as well. I'm here to throw my support to the EDD board for your consideration of levy of this tax. 
Um, we were here before, supporting it before, and we are, I, my opinion hasn't changed on it, so we're here to support you, and uh, thank you very much. Jeremiah Supple, followed by Stephen Ortigo. Good evening. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, speak to you all about this matter. Um, the, uh, the way I see this is uh, this conversation has two parts to it. Um, the first one, the first part is does, does uh, do the EDDs, is this good or is this bad for the overall economy of our, of our community? Um, now, uh, the second part of this conversation is uh, does the public have a right uh, to be involved in the conversation and the decision process? Those are two parts. Uh, the f talking about the first part briefly, uh, with regards to does this, I'll use the word efficacy, does this have e economic efficacy? Um, and um, does this really benefit the community as a whole? Um, well, I've, I've studied this, uh, this economically uh, for about 10 years now. It first came up at a, uh, at a meeting. Uh, I was on a, on a board with, uh, with the uh, uh, local uh, Chamber of Commerce, and, um, and I brought uh, economic studies that were done back then. Uh, I was not allowed to to pass out the economic studies. They were not, they did not want to have a conversation about whether this was good or not. They wanted to have a conversation about how to pass it. Um, but I can tell you that I have, after 10 years of reading economic studies on this, I have yet to find um, an, an economist that says this has a positive influence on the economies of the entire community. Now, it may very well be beneficial to downtown. I, I own a building downtown, I own Garden Square downtown, and it may be very well financially beneficial to me for that building. But I'm not, I'm not here about that. I'm here about the whole community, the entire community. And the, uh, uh, all economic reports show that it is a it is at best neutral, and more times than not, it's a negative economic impact to the economy as a whole. Um, so the only economic studies I've seen by this group wanting to pass this is, uh, is uh, um, I, I think it was uh, uh, Kevin Nakan that uh, said he had to wait in line to, uh, in buying his boudin at Billy's, uh, and that that was to him economic uh, 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 evidence enough of, of the efficacy of the uh, of this type of uh, business proposal. Now, the law, the law that uh, allows you to do this, uh, as uh, Mr. Little says, it gives you. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't say this is the right thing to do. It gives you the power to decide what is the right thing to do. And this law circumvents the spirit of the law that, that we all agree to that voters should decide, should, should be the ones to decide how they're taxed locally. I mean, that's what we've agreed to. This law is a law that allows you to circumvent that law. And the question is, not is it legal, I, 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 I'm convinced that, it's, that technic technically the law is probably there, but uh, again, is it the right thing to do? Is it in the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish in creating trust in our community? Uh, uh, 250 years ago, uh, the, uh, the economist Adam Smith said that in his, he quoted, I'll quote him, that Trust is the absolute essence of, uh, of the success of any society. And I ask that you maintain that trust 
and allow the, the citizens to be involved in the conversation and the decision process of raising taxes. Thank you. Stephen Ortego, followed by Mackenzie Fontenot. Uh, good evening, members of the Economic Development District for downtown. Uh, Stephen Ortego, I am an architect and developer in downtown Lafayette. And uh, to Scott's defense, uh, Bunat is a big business there. I know for eight years ago it was a $2 million industry and had 84 direct employees from it. Um, and I know that they had enough money from sales taxes to bond out to build the new, um, their new uh, fire station. So I will say that. Um, also, um, the, one of the, the bigger projects that I've worked on and had the pleasure of doing because I really do believe in downtown and I believe in this community. Um, so much so that I've invested not only a lot of my time, but I've invested a lot of my money. Um, and seven other partners have invested a lot of money to build Vermilion Lofts on the corner of Johnston and Vermilion. Um, and I can tell you right now, it's a $4.3 million project. Um, and I can tell you right now, we can bring a lot more investors to downtown, but the city is gonna have to step up and, and invest also. Um, it's the only way that you're gonna be able to remain competitive. And I think that the, I know that this economic development district is gonna be that opportunity to bring much larger um, economic um, investments and that this gives you the opportunity to be a partner in those investments uh, to make sure that we're getting it back 10, 15, 20 times uh, over just a couple years. Um, and I'm sure I can tell you all, all the war stories about what we've gone through, um, but that's not what we're here today. So I just wanted to, uh, uh, I also would like to welcome the two new members uh, to the city council um, or the EDD. Um, and I look forward to working with you all on future projects uh, in downtown Lafayette to make this a stronger, stronger downtown, a stronger community, and something that everybody can be proud of. You ready to speak? Um, yes, I have three other speakers. Okay. Mackenzie Fontenot. She passed. Tim Supple. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Charlie, thank you for making my case for me. You had to explain it again. That says it all. There was no public discussion about this. Charlie's been on his best lawyer at this. No one knows it better than Charlie. And he was on that payroll for how long? All above board. I don't slight him. He's a lawyer to do his job. The problem is they did this in secret. And there is no doubt about that in any of your minds that they did it in secret because you didn't even know about it. Here is your chance to say no. I'm not here to argue about the EDDs. I think the EDDs will probably help downtown, help Holy, uh, Holy Rosary, might help, I don't know. That's not the point. The point is Charlie had to explain it again and you're still not sure about it. And as far as the liabilities, don't believe there's not gonna be liabilities because if they build a street, they're not going to be around to maintain that street. So the liability that will fall on the city and the parish in the future is whatever they build. I'm not against them building it. But that's the liability, just like every other subdivision we buy, or we, or we, we, we allow to do. It falls on the taxpayer. So don't say it doesn't fall on the taxpayer. It will fall on the taxpayer, every bit of it, because the whole point is to build infrastructure but they won't be around to pay for it. It will fall on the citizens to pay for it. But I'm not here to talk about the EDDs and whether they're good or bad. I'm here to talk about trust. I'm here to talk about transparency in our government. You're witnessing it now. We're having an investigation of our major departments because there's no trust. And if you pass this, if you pass this without a public discussion, 
then there's never going to be any trust. And I will not trust this board. I, I know these people at EG, they're nice people. But I, what would we have a conversation about now? What's the next thing? You will have ratified and you will have encouraged this same behavior. So you, you have the opportunity right now to establish trust with your citizens. And you have the opportunity right now to destroy it. So not you can't take these EDDs up at another point. You can. They can come up any time. Ask Charlie. He knows better than everybody. So this is not about whether EDDs are good or bad. Because I can make the case that's bad. My brother can make the case that's bad. We have economic studies we can show you. That'll show you why. But you haven't seen them, have you? You haven't seen any of those studies. Why? Because there's been no public debate on it. Because the fact is, this was an ambush. Pure and simple. We brought in people. I joined with one Acadiana, Acadiana Planning Commission and DDA to bring in an urban development. Bring in a person to speak on that. I put up my own money. I don't have any property downtown. I have no dog in that fight. But I love downtown just as much as you guys do. Not any less. I love it just as much. I love the city of Lafayette just as much as everybody else here. Not any less than you. I don't have any money to make off of this. But yet I'm here. So I ask you as a council, or whatever your board, whatever you are, reestablish trust. Don't vote for this tonight. Make them have a conversation with the public on this issue. Because if you don't, then you've defined who you're going to be. And every board after you will follow in that same favor. Thank you. Adam Lofton. to speak at this public hearing tonight. Uh, I am a restaurant owner downtown and also a property owner, and I'm uh, speaking in support of levying this um, tax for the EDD. I know that most of my customers are overwhelmingly in support of this as well, and they're much more excited about the improvements that y'all can direct downtown to improve what we have over a small increase in the sales taxes, so I appreciate y'all. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Chair, just for the downtown EDD, we had 12 citizens who did not wish to speak who signed in to support it. Mr. Naki, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, no matter what, when we look at this levy, it's not constitutionally correct. It's not done by the book. It is done subversively. It is done under the cloak of darkness. It is done without input from the citizens who are going to pay it. And that's a travesty of our government. That is not how this country was formed. That is not what we are as a people. The gentleman spoke tonight about the levying of taxes against black people without representation. That's what we're doing tonight. That's exactly what we're doing. We're levering taxes without a vote, without representation. And that's a shame. I mean, most of these taxes coming forward are going to be in some of the most impoverished areas in this area. That's where that money's going to come from. So we're going to rob from the poor to give to the developers. Is that right? Is that what you want? I have a gentleman here tonight who'd like to come forward, Mr. Michael Lunsford, if you don't mind. He'd like to enlighten us on a few things that he and I were discussing regarding the sales taxes, state levies, et cetera. Uh, he's a well-informed man. And I'm sure his salary for this is exorbitant. Uh, Mr. Charles, I know, has done well with the city. Uh, Mr. Lunsford, I appreciate you being here and coming forward to help us clarify some of these things regarding the levy and these taxes. 
Uh, who is paying you to be here tonight, sir? We are donor funded. We don't have a dime from the taxpayers. Oh, okay. Uh, well, thank it's you all for private coming. donations uh, that allows us to operate. And um, so we, you know, we don't, I don't have a dog in the hunt. So if you're looking for a, a third party, disinterested third party, uh, I think I'm your guy. <clears throat> Could you kind of explain what was going on as far as this Lebanese taxes, both state and locally, how they're okay. related? Okay, I, Ms. Williams, I, uh, I got a little binder for everybody. We put this together today. I apologize. It's not, um, it's pretty on the outside. It's a little sloppy on the inside. But I just, I, I wanted to put together something just for our research so far and what we've found. And I think that um, we've only had a short amount of time to look into this. You put five districts up in 28 days. I mean, <laughs> I'm one guy. Uh, it, it takes me a little while to get through all of these. So a couple of things I wanted to at least bring to your attention. I know that 12 people signed in in favor um, a few months ago when these came up originally, 1,508 signed in in opposition. That's not in here. I'm just remembering a few months ago. And I think those folks aren't here tonight because they've kind of given up hope. Uh, they think that the, uh, the, deck, uh, the deck is stacked and it's just going to go the way it goes. Um, so speaking of that, I know many of you have been talking about this for some time. You probably already made your decision. We've seen this with the council. Uh, I'm here not to beat you over the head with facts. I'm here to offer you an alternative point of view that you're not getting from anywhere else. So one of the things I'll, I'll bring up if you're out buying a house or buying a car, what's the, the old uh, cliche, I guess, buyer beware, do your own research, kick the tires, see how things are put together. Make sure it's a good buy. Check the roof. You know, when's the last time uh, it, it rained? Did it flood? You know, these are standard questions you're going to have if you're spending your own money. Are you asking these questions here? So I put together these talking points just for that, just to give you something to think about. Again, the, the no vote today, if that's what you choose to do, is not a no forever vote. It might be a, we need to talk a little bit more about this vote. It might be a, let's have this conversation, let's have some town hall meetings like we did for the Home Rule Charter some time ago. And a number of you voted for that. And you did have the, the town hall meetings. And uh, n no such meetings were held for these, you, you recall. Something else I want to mention before I, I get into these numbers is that the people who are here tonight in support of these taxes, for the most part, have substantial economic interest in their passage. I have no interest one way or the other. If it, they pass, I'm not affected necessarily. I might pay a little bit more for lunch at Pooh Parts downtown, but um, otherwise, not a big deal. But those folks stand to gain potentially millions in development fees and, and money. So this is the, uh, the downtown one. So I'm going to flip over to the first. And this is all Home Rule Charter. Just as a reminder, we had this debate some time ago. The Home Rule Charter um, was passed by the voters, what was it, like December? It, it's been a short time ago. So has the council passed an ordinance to levy any tax? According to the Home Rule Charter, an ordinance is required. That's on that first page. It's page number 10. If you have your booklet, by the way, I do have one of the booklets. Y'all are welcome to follow along there as well. These are all, because this is the new council, I, I'm using the new Home Rule Charter. The next page is Power to Levy Taxes. And uh, I have it highlighted just to show you that there's the process. Uh, we're on D on the next page. All proposals to levy a new sales and use tax shall be submitted to the voters for approval in accordance with the election laws of the state. So I ask you a question here. If the council may not levy a tax without a vote of the people, how can the council delegate that authority to levy a tax to themselves acting as a separate board? I think it's, uh, it's disingenuous to the voters who approved this home rule charter just a short time ago with the expectation 
that if you were going to levy a new tax, it would at least come to them for their approval. Right, just some ideas, just some, just some things. If you're looking for a good reason, if you're looking to change your mind, these are just some thoughts to help you realize that, uh, that goal. Okay, Mr. Naki, you just about finished? So, uh, I'm sorry. No, you, you still got the floor. You yes, sir. Okay. And, and I had uh, some other questions involved in this, okay. Mr. Lunsford. Um, in pursuant of the collection of these taxes mm -hmm. and in the levy of it, if it moves forward, of course, we have a sales tax. Right. We know that's going to be, if you buy lunch at food <coughs> parts, you're going to pay more. But I'm reading into this, and it talks about regarding taxing lease and rental of property. So if I'm renting from you and you collect that rent, you have to pay a tax on that rent. Now, I did, I did check on that, and that was something that we posted earlier today. And it services. Was, it was a question we had. Uh, I know state law services, and perhaps Mr. Landry could address that more specifically, but I know some services are, are not taxable, like a haircut, and I think legal services and such. Also, the rent and leasing of equipment, I called the school board who is, uh, they collect the tax. That's their job. And they said that it's not non-movable real estate, it's just movable property, like a vehicle or, or whatever else you would expect to rent or lease, like OJ's rental. So that is a little bit different. Uh, and they tell me it doesn't apply here. So the word tangible personal property has nothing to do with the building then? Uh, they said tangible personal property is personal, like something you can carry around. Yeah. All right. So. And that is the case? Ms. Yes. Landry? Yes, yes. That would be the case. Yeah. There's no objection to that. No. Yeah, okay. yeah you, you sure mm -hmm. can approach. Please. You, please do. Just to clarify, you're not imposing any additional sales tax, use tax, a hospi the hospitality tax that isn't part of the regular sales tax under the definition of our tax code. Mm -hmm. So the information that I think this gentleman has cleared up is that you don't pay tax in Louisiana on rental property, that you're, you're not imposing new tax on anyone that isn't part of the sales tax regime that's in place today. What about sales of services? If there are taxes, sales taxes on services, then there would be a sales tax in the district. There are not many services that are subject to uh, sales tax. And by the way, I want to clarify something. I'm not being paid to be here tonight either. I want to be, make this very clear that <clears throat> we are not being paid. Uh, our contract uh, ran out before three public, very public meetings where hundreds of people attended. I am not being paid. I want to clear that up. As it relates to the question, if there is a sales tax that is imposed on whatever the activity is, if you have a movie theater, you pay a sales tax, then there will be a uh, EDD tax. You are not imposing new tax on items that aren't subject to sales tax today. I want to also reiterate, all right, because there's confusion that continues to be brought here. The city of Lafayette is not imposing this tax. Your, your plan of government has nothing to do with what's being uh, presented to you today. It's under the legislature. There are several hundreds of these. They have been approved by the Louisiana Supreme Court under the Cabela's case, under the Bass Pro case, and any discussion that you don't have the authority to uh, approve this tax today is from somebody who is uninformed, not willing to look at the Louisiana Supreme Court cases that authorize this. Okay. Mr. Lanford, do you have anything to add to that? Well, we're not really talking about the legalities of this. I'm not an attorney. We're talking about really what everybody's talking about, trust. You know, if the voters expected you who you're really the city council, to be quite honest. You just don't have the usual trappings of the mayor president here with us. Uh, if they expect that you wouldn't levy a tax without their approval, I just believe that you wouldn't do it as a board that you've appointed yourselves to. And whether it's legal or not, I think it's a valid point. Um, also, I do have a question. Uh, on the next page, I had 
the section 79 control over special districts on or before June 1st, 2020, the city council and the parish council jointly shall by ordinance create, consolidate, merge, abolish, reorganize, or reaffirm any agency in existence on that date. Uh, and it, it also goes into powers and such. My question is, when did the joint council meet to establish that you are the uh, correct uh, organization that manages the district. Now I understand Mr. Landry is going to say, well, it says acting as the city of Lafayette before, but he also just said that the city parish council passed it. And we have, in fact, if you flip to the next page, it's so important in here that it was reiterated again in section 8.3 that on or before June 2020, the city council and the parish council jointly shall by ordinance specify, reaffirm the governing authority of all special districts existing on that date that were created by the city parish council, which to me, this qualifies. So again, just giving you a little bit more information, a little bit more background that you can get an idea. Perhaps if you're looking to change your mind, these are some good points that'll help you through that process. Uh, something else that I find interesting, and I know this doesn't have anything to do with the Home Rule Charter, uh, Mr. Landry brings up. The next page I have included Section 8 7 or Article 8, Section 7, which says that any special legislative acts pertaining to the Lafayette Parish, the city of Lafayette, insofar as they are in conflict with the provisions of this charter, henceforth are inoperative and of no effect. So Title 33 could be considered, in my opinion, a, a direct conflict of the portion of this charter that says you're not allowed to raise a tax without a vote of the people. But again, this isn't Lafayette Consolidated Government. This is Everything Lafayette Consolidated Government is except for the mayor president. So you're a district, I suppose. And on the next page, I've included the state constitution, Article 6, Section 6, which pretty much reiterates the same thing. And these are just my talking points for the general overview of all of these. I, I do have some specific ones as it relates to each one of these districts. And if, uh, if, if you all will uh, humor me a little bit, we can jump into the downtown district since that's where we are. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. So um, I don't know if you all remember, this is a document that was created. The Downtown Development Authority generates somewhere around $400,000 in taxes every year through a uh, ad valorem tax. They, I'm assuming, spent some of this money on this document because it, it holds their logo. It also holds the logo of Lafayette Consolidated Government and the Economic Development Authority. But Downtown Development created a document and I've included the page here, the Ambassador Town Center. These are just some case studies that they gave, and I just wanted to kind of review those. The Ambassador Town Center is where the Costco is, and I don't have a lot of information here, but my question was, okay, y'all did, y'all, I don't know that anyone here specifically approved the Costco project. But, but Mr. They, Mike, yes. we talk right here, we oh. talking about EDDs, and I know you're trying to get into Costco, what happened in the past, but we talking about the five of them right here. Right. They're, yeah, the EDDs are included as a major but, point uh, in this. I under, uh -huh. understand, but then you are talking about the past. We're trying to move forward. The gentleman earlier I'm, spoke about mm -hmm. trust. Now, this happened in the past, the Costco. Okay. So I would appreciate if you stick to what we're talking about that's now. Good, that's not an EDD. And, and the Costco, I don't think, is an EDD. It's not, but it was a yeah. pilot program approved by the council. Okay, but that's the council, not this council. This is a new, we, the charter has changed. We split the city and the pair, so please stick to downtown, university, Holy Rosary, and what have it. Make that point, please. Okay, this is a case study that was created by the Downtown Development Authority as proof that the concept will work. Mm -hmm. I'm reviewing the concept, and I'm telling you guys, based on their analysis, I feel like there's a flaw here because the incentive amount was $11.5 million. And on the next page, I have an email from Lori Toops that said no one loaned them any money. They just gave them incentive. So the pilot, the payment in lieu of tax for $11 million, they're not paying it. They just got an $11 million tax break. And there's, they, they did the infrastructure themselves. That's the point I'm bringing up. This is a, a program that was created by the council, and I'm just showing you, you're creating a new program here. This is history of what's happened in Lafayette, and we don't understand history, this is we're doomed to repeat it. This is alternatives. Right, this is just alternative thoughts. Uh, Another one that I had that's right here in the same, and if y'all want my copy, I'm happy to give it to you. I can, I'm sure you probably already have one. But the studios 
and they actually the name of this is Studio 114, and the incentive amount was $460,000. But if you go through here, I added this up. They lost money every year. This project loses money. Um, last year, it lost $61,000. The year before that, it lost $84,000. The year before that, it lost $92,000. The year before that, it lost $76,000. These are all projects that were created with these incentives, with these grand ideas that, hey, this could work. This could be a great idea. Let's try it. I'm giving you history. These are things that they say are successes. They're losing money. The next, if you flip past those documents, the last one, I think there's a third tab there. I wanted to bring to your attention that uh, the Downtown Development Authority also was approved, and it's on the second page, in 2007 for 10.91 mills. That's all they're allowed to collect according to state law. Well, because of a constitutional uh, section, and I don't have it listed here, they're allowed to increase their millage beyond what the voters approved. What was the public meeting on that? Yes, they can announce it on their bulletin board and they can roll the tax forward. They increased their tax rate to 12.75 mils, the DDA did. And they did it this year and they've been doing it for a couple of years now. That's a 17% tax increase that no voter approved. So I'm, I'm trying to make the point that they're just after, they're, they're trying to grow the amount of revenue that they're taking in. Is it successful or not? The DDA was created for the purpose of increasing the valuation downtown. The reason that the millage has gone up is because the valuation has been going down. They have failed. And a good friend of mine once said <laughs> that the, um, I'm trying to think of what he said. I'm sorry. He oh. said that in government, failure pays better than success. And so here we are today. For a $700,000 per year tax because the $400,000 they are getting now is not enough. So we're, we're just continued down. The Sterling Shopping Center, which is a TIF, it's over there on Louisiana Avenue. I just, I know because he says that you have to approve every dime that's spent. So I included, it's in, it's in the book. So if you look at the next page, it's um, fund 226. And so every expense is up to you. You're the sole arbiter of every dime. So if we go to the next page, last year they spent $5.7 million in a TIF district. Do you know what they spent it on? It says here contractual services. $5.7 million in contractual services they spent on Louisiana Avenue last year. Did y'all approve that? Were you the arbiter of every dime? of $5,739,974, where'd that money go? Who was the contractor? What did they build last year? And the next page shows that because it breaks across pages, it's fund 226, and I know Ms. Toops isn't here because she's not part of the district. So she can't necessarily explain this. But these are the points that I'm bringing to you just to kind of help you through the process. Does this make sense? Am I doing my due diligence? Should we take a little bit more time? Should we talk about this a little more? Should we bring in public comment? Should we have town hall meetings? Should we ask for other ideas? Should that, we ask the voters to vote on it? Should you ask the voters to vote on it? Absolutely. I, mean, I think that's a good bottom idea. Bottom line is they're the ones who's paying this, this bill. They're the ones who's taking the money out of their pocket. They're the ones who's giving it to people for their trust. Mm -hmm. And where is the trust? We they don't even know, a lot of them don't even know they're paying the tax. Right. And it's a shame to see this move forward like this. So Mr. Lewis, thank you for the time. Uh, I'm gonna come back Honestly, thank you. with my five minutes um, on each of these separate ones if you wanna keep the binder handy. I'm just gonna go through what I found in each one of these that I think is relevant to the discussion for that district. <coughs> and I did bring my Title 18, which is the election code, which as far as I know, doesn't say anything about not voting on taxes, but it's, it's here. Thank you, Mr. Lunker. I heard a gentleman earlier, I think this has been here and seen there, near and there, but I've been on the council going on five years, and I know for a fact I had been involved with the university corridor and a little bit with the downtown development. I have been involved. So when we talk about that, uh, it's being rushed to the people. People don't know they are paying taxes. And I, and I also heard one of my 
colleagues say that black people, that they don't, they may not realize that they are paying taxes, but we have a few black people that's here now that they don't have a problem with it. I represent, I'm not gonna say majority of black constituents, but there's not one black constituent in the district that I represent say, this, don't pass it, don't vote for it. Not one. Now I know people on TV looking at AOC, hopefully y'all still looking at it. Any black that do not want the, DD, the EDD to pass, please call me, text me. Black people, black and white, it's not about black and white, it's about doing something that's good for the community. That's what it's about, doing good for the community. Just because you're black doesn't mean you're poor. And if you are poor, you want the same quality of life like everyone else because you're paying tax. Poor people pay tax. Black people pay tax. Not just white folks or rich people pay tax. There's a lot of things that's going on that things happen. Again, I've been on the council five years and the areas that I represent, nobody's knocking on their door and saying, I wanna put this building up, I wanna put sidewalks, I wanna do anything. This is a way to collect funds that won't have to come through the general fund to, to support whatever the project people need. I represent University Corridor. Something finally starting to happen, why? Because people are hearing about the EDD. Someone came to my office last week, just purchased some property not too far from the university. And you know what this gentleman told me? I'm, will, I'm willing and welcoming to pay that extra one penny for my business. And he's not even from Lafayette. And something that really, I'm not gonna say disappoint me, really it doesn't, but a lot of people that's against this don't even represent the area that this is gonna be in, the EDD. In fact, they might not even know where the areas are. They probably don't pass on that area. Don't shop there. Maybe they do, but I doubt it. Ms. Cook. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I just had a quick discussion about the, the public discussions. I know that uh, Mr. Landry made the uh, comment that we actually have had, this is our third time that it's been before the public. So it's, we've, we've talked about it. It's not like we've been in the back room with it. It came up maybe quicker than you thought it should have, but we've had three opportunities to speak about it tonight being one of them. And the reference to the 1,500 people that were opposed to it, maybe they learned a little bit more about it and that's why they're not here tonight. Um, I'd like to think that that's the only reason you think they're not here is because they gave up. Maybe they understand it better now. So this would have been an opportunity for them to come and speak as well against it if they were opposed to it. Um, most of the people that I have spoken with, constituents that I represent, um, the majority of them are in support of this because it is some, uh, it's an opportunity for the city to, to make some, some economic growth that maybe they can't do on, we can't do on our own or developers can do things that, and, and to also make the point what I believe Charles, and he may have to correct me on this, um, you know, the comment has been developers, you know, we're putting money in developers' pockets. Um, I, you know, I, that's, from what I understand, that's far from the truth. We are, a, 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 you know, affording an opportunity for um, infrastructure to be put in that maybe could not have been put in before, which would also encourage um, growth as well in certain areas. So, I, I, you know, I don't think that that is an argument that is, has any teeth. And so I think that we need to stop saying that because I think it distorts the truth in this whole economic, um, the EDDs. And, and so I, I just, you know, I, I guess my point is that we have had time to discuss this um, if, and we've had the opportunity for people to reach out that have not liked it. But we've also had, I personally have had more people saying that they support this and that's, I'm here to represent the majority and that's, that's kind of what we're doing with this. Um, I would also like to speak, um, call up Miles Mott from the DDA as well, if you would, if you would come and just give us a little bit of insight um, from the DDA on uh, what, what you think about th this particular area. Yes, thank you, Ms. Cook. Uh, for the record, my name is Miles Mott. I'm the chairman of the Lafayette Downtown Development Authority, and I appreciate this forum for, to hear all these points. And uh, Mr. Nakam and Mr. Lazard, welcome to the uh, council as new councilman. I'm going to tell you this, that uh, the EDD that's proposed for the Downtown Development Authority, and I'm gonna restrict my comments to that EDD. It's not a pilot 
and it's not a TIF. So any attempts to compare it or even say that it's like those two programs is erroneous. Um, the DDA is charged with the development and growth of the downtown area. Uh, the EDD that's proposed not right now or the tax that's proposed is going to give us an opportunity to build and develop infrastructure. Downtown is craving for infrastructure development. Um, I mean, it has gotten, Mr. Nakan, to the point where developers coming downtown are told we can't add another toilet to flush. To, to say that the city or the city parish is going to now all of a sudden, since there's a new form of government, since there's a new mayor president, will all of us at once come up and start funding these projects as being actually disingenuous and we're trying to fool ourselves. The last major project we had was the Jefferson Street scape. That was in the mid 90s. Um, there has not been one major project downtown funded by the government since that time, whether it's infrastructure or not. Um, honestly, if we're all honest with ourselves, from this point on, we don't see it. The time is now. We have some momentum downtown. These EDD mechanisms have worked throughout the country, and they are working in five other places in this parish. At Louisiana Avenue, Broussard has one, Scott has two, and Karen Crow has one. The, uh, the thing about the transparency and public hearings is that, and with all due respect to the people who are opposed to this from some type of voter or constituency standpoint, if there are any complaints, those complaints on the propriety of passing this need to be directed to Baton Rouge and the legislature. The EDDs were developed primarily by Republicans in Baton Rouge as a mechanism to foster infrastructure growth growth and to actually foster and support areas like downtown Lafayette who need the extra money to develop the infrastructure. The, we have a Republican form of government. People don't vote on everything that affects them in a Republican form of government. We send people that we elect to Baton Rouge and we trust them to pass statutes and other laws that assist the people. If you are against something, if you don't like the EDD form of government taxation, go to Baton Rouge and do something about it. Now, one thing that this, uh, again, one thing that an EDD does not do, okay, it does not force a tax on anybody. It doesn't force a tax. No one in the district is being forced to pay a tax. It's a voluntary tax. It's not as though you vote for a property tax where everybody living in a district has to pay the tax. It's a sales tax. The people who are coming to be consumers with retailers pay that tax. That's a voluntary act. You don't want to pay the extra penny in downtown Lafayette? Go somewhere else. The, the, the thing, one thing I, think that the council needs to realize, and all the people who are naysayers about it, I, I've even heard all the people opposing it like it. They say it's a good thing. They just oppose to the transparency. They oppose to the, the fact that the people didn't vote. The fact that the people didn't vote needs to be addressed in Baton Rouge. But what we need to understand is that the people who are most likely to risk business because of an increase in tax are those retailers who support it. They're saying, listen, I'm gonna risk losing a customer because I'm going up, uh, support a penny extra tax. I'm gonna risk that because I think the, the gain is worth the risk because the infrastructure is crumbling around us. The city parish government, I'm gonna say it, is basically broke other than just real, real basic flood uh, uh, remedies and other things that are, are absolutely needed, okay? If we never grow downtown, then I guess we don't need to fix the sewage, 
okay? If we want to grow at all and develop, well, then we need to do something about it. And if the constituents downtown and the retailers downtown want to do something about it and take the risk on their businesses back, I think we ought to support them. And that's why we at Downtown Development Authority support that. And we are, our objective is to use every bit of any money generated by this tax for infrastructure. We have no intent, and I've never heard anything except from the opponents about this money going in any developer's pocket. Um, and if you have any questions about this, I'd be happy to ask you, answer them. Thank you. Mr. Lazar, you have the floor. First of all, Ms. Williams, uh, are we through with public comments? We this. did have one citizen who had signed a blue court and did not wish to speak, but then changed his mind. But since he signed a blue court timely and um, would like to speak, I would call him up. His name is Jason Collins. Please do so. Thank you, Mr. Lazar. How y'all doing? I came before you to not talk to the EDD board, but to talk to my city council, the members elected to represent the city and I'm in opposition of the uh, EDD I mean whether it's legal or not is not why it should be voted against it, okay yeah it is legal big deal is it right or wrong ever since everybody all of us we are raised as kids to know the difference between right or wrong. The right thing to do if you're going to propose a tax is to bring it to a vote of the people, not five, six, ten people that sit on a council, a vote of the people. That's all we want. If the people, if the constituents really truly believe that the EDD is good, then they'll vote yes on the EDD on a ballot why not put it if it's so good and there's so much support not a problem it'll pass and if it passes by a vote of the people then I'm for it. nobody is coming to you and saying that growth is a bad thing and improving the uh, the city of Lafayette is a bad thing everybody wants to see the city improve and grow we're just saying that the way it was went about is wrong it should have been voted on by the people this is a government of the people by the people for the people this EDD was not done by the people it was done by a certain select few mr. Landry he received fifty five thousand dollars if I remember correctly if I'm wrong please correct me I, I believe it was fifty five thousand dollars that he received of taxpayer dollars from the city to do documentation for the EDD okay if this passes today and there's a final discussion is that $55,000 going to be refunded to the city taxpayers because there was uh, my understanding they said that uh, there's no money from the city taxpayers that's going to go to the EDD well it's already had $55,000 city taxpayers is that money going to be refunded to the city taxpayers to the general budget and uh, with that, that's why I wanted to come to you and say I'm in opposition. I urge you to do the right thing, the ethical thing, and vote no today. Not permanently. Put it on a ballot. Let the people decide. Thank you. Mr. Lazar. Ms. Williams, is that, the, is that the last speaker? Yes, sir. Okay. Could you tell me, could you give me a tally of the total number of people that I either called in or signed in in support uh, versus the number that are opposed. A total tally if you have it. Thirty-five with, with the downtown. Thirty-five in support. Seven in opposition. That, that's a total either called in or signed cards tonight or whatever the case may be yes sir okay since I was sworn into the council 
on January 6th <laughs> and started getting correspondences on January 7th. And since that time, I've really lost count between the texts and emails, phone calls, uh, people stopping me in line at Super One, and what have you, various businesses throughout the city. And I can only speak for myself, uh, but I can tell you that it has been overwhelmingly in support. And I'm talking about a cross section of the community. I'm not just talking about black people or white people or Democrats or Republicans or liberals or conservatives or Catholics or Baptists or whatever the case may be. A cross section of the community overwhelmingly in favor of it. Uh, and, and just to clear up what I consider to be some serious misstatements that have been made tonight, one is a lack of public input. If I stand correct, this is the third meeting in which the public have had the opportunity to state their position on this issue. The, the fifth, okay, I stand corrected, the fifth opportunity. Uh, Mr. Lunsford, you stated that some 1,500 people have expressed opposition to this. I have not heard from one of those 1,500. All of my contact information is public. Just want to state that. Mr. Naki. I just uh, am disappointed to see that we, as a governing body, can impose a tax on our citizens without a vote of the citizens when our charter says to allow them to say yes or no. Um, I, I know it's going to end up going through tonight. I can see it happening. Uh, I'm sure that there'll probably be a resolution moving forward to repeal these EDDs. Uh, I've been in discussion with uh, Mayor President Gilbert regarding this. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. But I think that the people who you say are in support of it, they haven't said that by way of a ballot. I think that would be wonderful to see that. That's the way it should be done. That's the democratic process. That is our republic. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jeremy, please read item number six. Board action, adopt a resolution of the board authorizing the levy and collection of a 1% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property and on sales of services within the boundaries of the downtown Lafayette Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the Downtown Lafayette Economic Development District commencing July 1st, 2020 and otherwise providing with respect thereto. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Motion by Ms. Lynette Cook. Second. Second by Mr. Melinda Zarr. Any board discussion? I see none. Ms., uh, any public comments? Yes, sir, we do have speakers signed in. Uh, first of which is Greg Walls. He will be followed by Eric Crozier. Uh, good evening, Council. My name is Greg Walls, um, uh, and I'd like to welcome the new new Council men um, uh, uh, with us here today. And um, earlier today, we, we heard somebody said taxation without representation, and I make the argument that's probably why we're here today and why we are wanting this EDD. Because I've lived in the district for 20 plus years. I'm a developer, I'm a business owner, I'm a retail business owner, and I've tracked the millions of dollars people in my district 
and surrounding neighborhoods have paid, how many millions of dollars in taxes we have paid. And I've tracked what we've got back in return. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not an expert on EDDs, but I think most of the time these EDDs are created for places like ours that have not, there has not been an investment in our district. If there would be a significant amount or a fair amount of investment in our district, we probably wouldn't even be here. So I encourage you all to support this. We're not doing it to line our pockets. We're doing this to survive. As a developer, why in any other, pla any other place in the parish or the city, anybody can connect to the sewer. If I come to the city with a project right now that I want to develop, I can't even connect to the sewer. How is that taxation without representation? So I encourage you. I'm going to make this short. I had a big three-page thing. Thank you. Um, Thank you. If there, but Thank you. I know it's Thank late. You. Thank you. And um, <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate y'all. Y'all do. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker. Eric Crozier. Eric Crozier. <laughs> Next speaker. Mackenzie Fontenot. And if you do not want to speak and you're here, just say pass. Mackenzie. Tim Supple. Pass. Lydia Romero. To begin, as a reminder, although all of you have been told you're acting as non-council members, the fact of the matter is you wouldn't be on this board if you weren't a council member and bound by oath. You've each given the oath. I do sol solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution and laws of this state and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me to the best of my ability and understanding. And I'm going to quote from you, quote for you from a home rule charter for the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government. Um, it's been referenced lately, old charter and new charter, um, but they're actually the same charter. So the sections I'm going to be quoting are worded exactly the same. This, uh, to preface, this economic development district was um, created by the former council, and that council was bound by the home rule charter. And Article 1, Section 101 states the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government operates under a home rule charter and subject to said charter is authorized as herein provided. In Section 105, the City Parish Government specifically shall have and is hereby granted the right and authority to exercise any power and perform any function necessary, requisite or proper for the manage management of its affairs, not inconsistent with the Constitution. Okay, the Louisiana Constitution declares in Article 1, Declaration of Rights, Section 1, Origin and Purpose of Government, all government of right originates with the people, is founded on their will alone, and is instituted to protect the rights of the individual and for the good of the whole. Its only legitimate ends are to secure justice for all. The rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by the state and shall be preserved inviolate by the state. <clears throat> Section two is called due process of law and it says no person shall be deprived of life, liberty or property except by due process of law. And section three is right to individual dignity. No person shall be denied the equal protection of the laws, slavery and involuntary servitude are prohibited except in the latter case as punishment for a crime. Okay, in regards to the economic development districts, there's clear evidence that the origination and authorship of the ordinance that created this EDD was by the mayor president or on his behalf, was inconsistent with the home rule charter for the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government, which clearly specifies that the council has legislative power, not the mayor president. This economic development also was not originated by the people. It was not authorized or approved by the people this governing board was not originated by the people. The members of this governing board were not elected by the people. The levy of a tax without a vote of the people is involuntary servitude and slavery. It's a violation of our rights and our constitution. 
this board has no authority or power to levy a tax. It's been said that this district is not under the city or parish of Lafayette. It is uh, not under their authority. It's created under state authority. Well, guess what? Our Declaration of Rights, Article 1, Section 1, the rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by, inalienable by the state and shall be preserved and violated by the state. What's our first declared right? Government originates on the will of the people. How do we legally know what the will of the people is? Election ballot records. You know, the state cannot authorize any governing body without the consent of the governed. It's our first declared right, and other rights, uh, declared rights are right to property, and all unenumerated rights are reserved to the people. To close, I'd like to read James Madison's essay, Property. This term in its particular application means that dominion which one man claims and exercises over the external things of the world in exclusion of every other individual. In its larger and juster meaning, it embraces everything to which a man may attach a value and have a right, and which leaves to everyone else the like advantage. In the former sense, a man's land or merchandise or money is called his property. In the latter sense, a man has a property in his opinions and the free communication of them. He has a property of peculiar value in his religious opinions and in the profession and practice dictated by them. He has a property very dear to him in the safety and liberty of his person. He has an equal property in the free use of his faculties and free choice of the objects on which to employ them. In a word, as a man is said to have a right in his property, he may be equally said to have a property in his rights. That is not a just government, nor is property secure under it, where the property which a man has in his personal safety and personal liberty is Time violated is by the arbitrary seizures of one class of citizens for the service of the rest. Thank you. Next speaker. Miles Mott. He's he left. <laughs> Jason Collins, I know you had signed in. Okay, thank you. Michael Lunsford. Good evening again. I just uh, wanted, I brought my phone this time. Hope that's okay. I wanted to debunk some urban legends. First, can't add another toilet to flush without this economic development district. Claire Taylor, who's here today, wrote a beautiful article on December 11th, LPTFA to build sewer station for downtown Lafayette. Problem solved. Here it is. Here's the article. By the way, LPTFA is not spending their own money. They're loaning the money. LUS can bond this and they can build a sewer lift station. That's what LUS does. So if the only reason that you're, <laughs> you're putting an economic development district together is so you can flush another toilet. I've got, I've got great news for you. You don't need it anymore. Um, Nanette, I think you said, mm -hmm. let me pull this up. You said this is not free money for developers. And I just happen to have here Fishman Haygood with Mr. Landry's company. This is his, his website. Title of the article, Economic Development Districts Equals Tax Dollars to Developers. It's on his website. Well, I could read the whole thing, but I only have five minutes. Um, let's see. Oh, we, um, let's see. No money for developers. What is infrastructure? That's my question to you guys. What is infrastructure? Is it a building? The DDA one says that they could build a hotel. And as I read it, they could hire employees to man the hotel. It's, it's in the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement. Is that infrastructure? Is that what the people think infrastructure is? Um, another thing that bothers, I think, everybody is, where's the plan? Well, the plan is, when you give us the money, we're going to hold public meetings, and we're going to talk to all these people, and we're going to find out what they think the plan ought to be. And we're going to give away a bunch of free Jason's Deli Box lunches. I, I partook of one of those for Create. And uh, at the end of two years, they never spent any of the money because they couldn't ever get a plan together. So why are we collecting a tax without any idea of what they're going to spend it on? Other than we promise we're, you know, you, you get to approve it. That's, that's great. But 
why don't you come, if you went to a bank with that plan, they'd throw you out. That's not a plan. Uh, another one I liked was, uh, this doesn't force a tax on anyone. If they don't like the tax, they can not shop there. So I'm going to ask for someone here to submit a, uh, an amendment to one of these things to say that all cash registers will have a sign explaining that there's a tax there, and every business door will have a sign explaining that there's a new tax there, and the district boundary will have a sign explaining that there's a district tax there. Is and that you, legal? And if you don't do that, well, is it legal to charge a tax without a vote of the people? I don't no, know. No, we're, we're having no, these. No, you were talking about putting cash registers and all that. But anyway, continue. Well, I'm just thinking if you yeah. want to give people a warning, if, if this isn't a speed trap, mm -hmm. then put a sign up. Let people know it's there. If you don't, I consider it the same thing as an old-fashioned speed trap. Speculations. Continue. Okay. And, oh, oh, the last thing I, I, I heard from you guys, uh, a number of you, is you haven't heard from anyone opposed uh, to these taxing districts, so I'm going to be sure to take care of that tomorrow. So we'll put out your information, and you'll get some phone calls. So that's something I can do. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Next. Miles Mott. He's gone. No, he's here still. Still on speak? Yeah. He, he'll pass. There are no other speakers. Thanks. Vote from the board to adopt this resolution. We didn't have you, but you did sign a blue cord for number five. We didn't have you for number six. Yeah, you put all of them, but you didn't put the item number. And there are two item numbers. You, if you want, you can allow him to speak. How many Under items? Number six, there are two. But There's the public you hearing. Want, you want to speak to this one, uh, Mr. Supple? Okay, thank you. Again, thank you. Uh, the, uh, the thing that I think we're missing is that, uh, again, looking at it globally, and um, the, um, uh, with regards to, to, to these uh, subsidy type economic development Initiatives that are uh, are a um, a factor of the government, not the free market. Um, we had um, tax collected downtown are used to subsidize roads leading out of downtown. So the 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 money is there for downtown. You just don't let it stay there. You subsidize. You create blight by subsidizing roads to the to the outskirts to the to the unincorporated areas that creates more unintended consequences by that subsidy so what you're now asking for is a, a, another subsidy to alleviate the unintended consequence of the previous subsidy and this is the this is this is the thing we're missing, that Northgate Mall killed Four Corners. Louisiana Avenue killed Northgate Mall. Acadiana, Acadiana Mall killed Johnson. The Scott Kiffs, Tiffs killed Acadiana Mall. Costco Tiffs is now hurting downtown. Don't you get it? One subsidy creates an unintended subsidy, an unintended consequence on the other side of town. You are creating blight. And then you have to, then you have to go back to the taxpayer and raise the rate of taxes because of, because of the unintended consequence of your previous subsidies. That's not the solution, guys. That's shallow thinking. You're, you're, you're missing the point. And, 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 and the other point is you're not listening to the people who have done the studies on this. You're listening to the guy who wrote the law. 
It's wrong. <clears throat> Thank you. Louisiana Avenue did not kill the North Gate Mall. Louisiana Avenue just recently came about maybe 12 years, 10 years. North Gate Mall was killed in the 80s. Any other speakers? No, sir. Okay, call for the vote from the board to adopt the resolution. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? No. Cook? Yes. Bazard? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. If you anyone signed to speak. Okay. Okay, I adjourn this special meeting and we move on to the next one. University Gateway EDD Board. Call order to EDD meeting. Jeremy, call the roll, please. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Abair? Cook? Yes. Lazard? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Jeremy, read item number three. Board action, nomination of officers. This is a public hearing and blue sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the board. I need nomination for University uh, Gateway Economic Development Board of Directors 2020 chair for university. I need a chair. Mr. Lewis. Okay. okay. Any board discussion? Public comment? Okay, let's vote for the chair. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Lewis. Cook? Lewis. Bazard? Lewis. Lewis is appointed chair. Nomination for University Gateway EDD of Board of Directors for 2020 Secretary, I mean Vice Chair. I nominate Mr. Andy Nakan. I'd like to define the nomination. I hope you. Okay. Mr. Lazar? I nominate Mr. Lazar for the vice chair. Okay. Board discussion? Public comment? And just as an FYI, we're doing um, the votes via voice vote, not electronic okay. vote, because it's you. still set up to do city council districts. Sure. And so we are doing voice vote to differentiate that this is the EDD. Okay, thanks. Vote for our 2020 vice chair. Lewis? Mr. Lazar? Nakan? Lazar. Abe uh, Cook? Lazar. Lazard? Lazard. Lazard is appointed. Okay. Nomination for University uh, EDD of Directors 2020, Secretary Treasurer. Nominate Ms. Cook. Ms. Cook nominated. Any board discussion? Comments from the public? Let's vote on the Secretary Treasurer for Ms. Cook. Lewis? Ms. Cook? Nakan? Cook. Cook? Cook. Lazard? Cook. Cook is appointed Secretary Treasurer. Jeremy Reed, item number six, uh, number four, please. Board action, a resolution of the board electing officers and otherwise providing with respect thereto. I need a motion and a second to consider eight consider adoption. Uh, moved by Mr. Andy Nakan, second by Ms. Nanette Cook. I need a motion and a second to amend the resolution to include the names of the newly elected officers. Moved by Mr. Andy Nakan, second by Ms. Nanette Cook. Okay, the names of the newly elected officers. Okay, board discussion of on amendment. Public comments on amendment. Okay, let's vote on the amendment for the resolution. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to amend is approved. Board discussion on resolution as amended. Public comments on resolution as amended. Vote on the adopted to um, for the amendment. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to adopt as amended is approved. Jeremy, please read item number five. 
Public hearing, public hearing on the University Gateway Economic Development District's intent to levy and collect a 1% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property and on sales of services within the boundaries of the University Gateway Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the University Gateway Economic Development District commencing July 1st, 2020 and otherwise providing with respect thereto and the resolution providing for the same introduced at the July 2nd, 2020 board meeting. Any public comments? Jeremiah Supple. He's gone. Leonard Viltz. Hello, I'm Leonard Viltz. I'm a resident of uh, Youngsville. I'm also a, a city worker. I get to see all aspects of the city. Um, I think uh, I support this because University um, is the gateway to the city, and when people pass on the highway, uh, there's not much to say about the city. And when international vo um, visitors visit the city, like around Mardi Gras, I ask them, I say, well, why are you here? Well, I want to see um, local culture. I want to see the, the music. I want to I I try the food. I want to see everything we, we can provide. I think... Um, what this does, and we're not tapping into the budget because we're strapped for cash for the city. So I think we can uh, provide uh, infrastructure for people to come visit the city, uh, give them a presentation where they can uh, enjoy what we have to offer. And I think um, university, the street has a lot of potential for growth. So I think it's set up for uh, something special for the city. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other com public comments? Lydia Romero. Hello, my name is Lydia Romero. As a reminder, although you all have been told you're acting as non-council members, the fact of the matter is you wouldn't be on this board if you weren't a council member and bound by oath as such. You each have given the oath, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution and laws of this state, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me to the best of my ability and understanding. What is referred to as old charter and new charter are actually the same charter. This economic development district was quote unquote created by the former council, but that council was bound by the home rule charter which is called a Home Rule Charter for the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government. Article 1, Section 1, the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government operates under a Home Rule Charter and subject to said charter is authorized as here and after provided. Section 105, the City Parish Government specifically shall have and here is hereby granted the right and authority to exercise any power and perform any function necessary, requisite or proper for the management of its affairs not inconsistent with the Constitution. The Louisiana Constitution declares in Article I, Declaration of Rights, Section 1, Origin and Purpose of Government. All government of right originates with the people, is found on their will alone, and is instituted to protect the rights of the individual and for the good of the whole. Its only legitimate ends are to secure justice for all. The rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by the state and shall be preserved and violated by the state. Section 2 is due process of law. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property except by due process of law. Right to individual, individual dignity. No person shall be denied the equal protection of the laws. Slavery and involuntary servitude are prohibited. There's clear evidence that the origination and authorship of the ordinance that created this EDD was by the mayor president or on his behalf and is inconsistent with the Home Rule Charter for the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government which clearly specifies that the council has legislative power, not the MP, not the mayor president. This EDD was not originated by the people. This EDD was not authorized or approved by the people. This governing board was not originated by the people. The members of this governing board were not elected by the people. The levy of a tax without a vote of the people is involuntary servitude and slavery. It is a violation of our rights and the state constitution. This board has no authority or power to levy a tax. 
It has been said that this district is not under the city or parish authority. It's under state authority. Well, our Declaration of Rights, Article 1, Section 1, states the rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by the state and shall be preserved and violated by the state. What's our first declared right? Government originates on the will of the people. How do we legally know what the will of the people is? The election ballot records. The state cannot authorize any governing body without the consent of the governed. It's our first declared right and other rights declared are right to property and all unenumerated rights are reserved to the people. To close, I'd like to read James Madison's essay, Property, so that you have a full understanding of what, why that's a declared right and what it truly means. This term in its particular application means that dominion which one man claims and exercises over the external things of the world in exclusion of every other individual. In its larger and juster meaning, it embraces everything to which a man may attach a value and have a right, and which leaves to everyone else the like advantage. In the former sense, a man's land or merchandise or money is called his property. In the latter sense, a man has a property in his opinions and the free communication of them. He has a property of peculiar value in his religious opinions and in the profession and practice dictated by them. He has a property very dear to him in the safety and liberty of his person. He has an equal property in the free use of his faculties and free choice of the objects on which to employ them. In a word, as a man is said to have a property, excuse me, as, in a word, as a man is said to have a right to his property, he may be equally said to have a property in his rights. That is not a just government, nor is property secure under it, where the property which a man has in his personal safety and personal liberty is violated by arbitrary seizures of one class of citizens for the service of the rest. I don't how, know how any of you can approve any tax in direct conflict with what I've just stated. Shame on everyone who approves any of these taxes. Shame on you and God help you. Thank you. Our next speaker. Uh, Mr. Chair, two citizens signed in specifically to support the, the university EDD but did not wish to speak. Uh, again, they are in support. That concludes the speaker, okay. sir. Chairman, please read item number six. Board action, adopt a resolution of the board authorizing the levy and collection of a 1% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property and on sales of services within the boundaries of the University Gateway Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the University Gateway Economic Development District commencing July 1st, 2020 and otherwise providing with respect thereto. Motion is second to adopt the resolution. So moved. Motion by Ms. Cook. Second. second by Mr. Lazar. Any council discussions? I see none. Public comment. Michael Lunsford. This is one that I, I haven't had a chance to get to yet, but I included uh, the beginning of the research, which is the names of all of the folks that are involved in this, and there are many. Uh, I won't bother reading them here, but I just wanted to make the point that I do believe the arts lofts are located in the district. I don't know if that has any bearing on anything since nothing's happened there yet. But um, also, the University Gateway is a district where I saw a lady walking home with her groceries because she couldn't afford a, a vehicle. And so you're gonna raise taxes at her grocery store, another 1%, one more. The highest tax state, second highest, excuse me, Tennessee's got us beat by what, like 0 0.02 or something. And we're gonna have the, the highest taxes in the state and the highest taxes in the nation. But um, I, I'm sure the folks in the district will be appreciative of paying a little bit more tax, and I'll be back for the next one. Thank you. Well, uh, in fact, Lafayette has the, the smallest tax, sales tax, compared to everyone else like Cam Crew, Broussard, Scott, Youngsville. Lafayette pays less taxes than they do. So for this lady you're talking, speaking about, uh, she, you know, probably she'll feel it, but again, she's right now paying less taxes than anyone else in the parish of Lafayette. 
Next speaker. There are no other speakers, Mr. Chair. Okay. Another speaker. Could I vote on? Uh, Wait, Mr. Chair. Yes. There's. You could come on up. What's your name? Miss Corner. Miss Corner. Miss Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie. I mean, yeah, we don't have it. Yeah, we both we both check them and we don't have, we didn't have it, but Stephanie Corney. Takes me longer to get up. My name is Stephanie Corney, and I am the proud owner of what will become the Lackett Bottle Arts. And not to put too fine a point on this, but I I love to go to New Orleans. When I go to New Orleans, I pay the sales tax. I don't refuse to pay the sales tax. I can't dicker over how much I pay for sales tax. If I stay at a hotel, I pay the sales tax. I don't dicker over it. I don't fuss about it. It is what it is. I choose to stay at that hotel. I choose to buy at that particular uh, <clears throat> place of business. And I didn't get to vote on it. That's what this is. That's what this is. So. The reason why we consider that we didn't get to vote on it is illogical. Nobody, nobody in New Orleans goes to a store and buys something. Nobody in Lafayette goes to a store and buys something. If you're not from Lafayette, you buy something, you pay the sales tax. You didn't get to vote on it. So. With that in mind, I'd like to say that we have a group. We are organized. We have had three meetings to discuss the university corridor. At one meeting alone, we had over 150 people show up. When this tax came up, when this actually came up, I sat quiet for a while and I thought about it. I read the law. I looked at all the, the things that come into play as far as this is concerned, and then I walked. I walked to all my neighbors that I know, that I have become friends with. I walked through the entire community, and I asked, is this something that you want? We cannot continue to depend on the city of Lafayette government to do what we need for over 40 years this was changed and we were disenfranchised from what was happening. And this changes everything because we feel like now that we are putting into the piggy bank and we will be able to sit at the table and discuss how our piggy bank will be spent. And there is a trust. You're talking about a trust, Mr. Nakia? There is a trust with our name on it, with our money in it. We have a plan. We have the opportunity. And we are willing to take the risk that this will take care of our sidewalks that had a hole in our, we had a hole at our business that was underneath our sidewalk that collapsed the sidewalk was there for years, and I called and complained about it. The hole was over five feet deep. It was over five feet wide. It went under the street, and there was this dickering going on about the fact that it was a state road versus a, a, a city road, and the sidewalk was part of the state, or it was part of the city. In the meantime, my councilman came by and he filled the hole with gravel and old black top, I think. And I mean, who's it, your councilman? You're my councilman. Oh. <laughs> I know, I, I know, but you know, it, it is, it's incredible to think that we don't have sidewalks along University Avenue. If you want to walk to the dollar store or walk to what will soon be not the grocery store, but the other little dollar store, Walking in our neighborhood, trying to cross university is, is just impossible. It is, it's like taking your life in your own hands. And I used to be in a scooter. I used to be in a motorized scooter. 
that only moves at a certain rate. When the cars are coming at you at 45 miles an hour, it's horrific. You can't, you can't actually be a community. You separated our community over 40 years ago. A decade ago, we got together and we've been working there ever since. And with your help, we are making changes. This is unimaginable what is gonna happen because the change that is gonna happen at Four Corners. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comment? No, sir. Let's vote on the, uh, to adopt this resolution. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? No. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Public comment? Yes, sir. See that anybody signed to speak? You see no? No, okay. sir. Okay. This special meeting has been adjourned. Let's go to the other special meeting, Holy Rosary, EDD board. Call to order. Jeremy, please call the roll. Sorry, I got lost. <laughs> Lewis? Here. Nakan? Here. Hebert? Cook? Here. Lazard? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. <laughs> Jeremy, number three, nomination of officers. Board action, nomination of officers. <laughs> uh, okay. Lewis. Lewis. Hold the roll. Okay, uh, board discussion? Public comment? No, sir. Vote on for chair. Lewis? Yes. Lewis? No, I can't. Cook? Lewis. Lazard? Lewis. Lewis is appointed chair. Okay. Nomination for Holy Rose Institution uh, Board of Directors for Vice Chair? Cook. Cook? Decline. Cook declined. Lazar. Lazar, okay. <laughs> public, I mean, uh, council discussion, public comments. Let's vote on the vice chair. Lewis? Mr. Lazar? Nakan? Lazar? Cook? Lazar? Lazar? Lazar is appointed. Mm -hmm. Nomination for Holy Rosary EDD of Director, Secretary, Treasurer. Board discussion, public comment. No, sir. Let's have a vote. Lewis? Ms. Cook? Nakan? Cook. Cook? Cook. Lazard? Yes. Cook is appointed Secretary Treasurer. Okay. Um, Jeremy, please read number five. Board action, a resolution of the board electing officers and otherwise providing with respect thereto. Public comment? No, sir. Jeremy Reed, number six. No. Mr. Chair, we are yes. number four. Oh. Board action. Okay. Let's see. All right. We need a motion and a, a second. A motion and a second for our, so the resolution. Second. Moved by Mr. Andy, second by Ms. Uh, Cook. Board discussion on amendment. Public comment on amendment. Need a vote on amendment for the resolution. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to amend is approved. Discussion on resolution as amended from the board. I see none. Public comment on resolution as amended. No, sir. Need a vote to adopt as amended. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to adopt as amended is approved. Jeremy, please read item number five. Public hearing, public hearing on the Holy Rosary Institute Economic Development District's intent to levy and collect a 1% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property 
and on sales of services within the boundaries of the Holy Rosary Institute Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the Holy Rosary Institute Economic Development District commencing July 1, 2020 and otherwise providing with respect thereto and the resolution providing for the same introduced at the January 2, 2020 board meeting. Public comments. Mr. Chair, we did have two citizens who specifically signed in only for Holy Rosary EDD in support of it. We have one speaker, Lydia Romero. Hello, my name is Lydia Romero. As a reminder, although you've all been told you're acting as non-council members, the fact of the matter is you wouldn't be on this board if you weren't a council member and bound by oath as such. You have each given the oath. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the constitution and laws of this state and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me to the best of my ability and understanding. What's referenced uh, recently as old charter and new charter are actually the same charter. This EDD was created by the former council, but that council was bound by the home rule charter. <clears throat> Article one, section one, the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government operates under a home rule charter and subject to said charter is authorized as here and after provided. Section 105 of the home rule charter the city parish government specifically shall have and, here, and is hereby granted the right and authority to exercise any power and perform any function necessary, requisite or proper for the management of its affairs, not inconsistent with the Constitution. The Louisiana Constitution declares in Article I Declaration of Rights, Origin and Purpose of Government. All government of right originates with the people, is founded on their will alone, as, and, is, and is instituted to protect the rights of the individual and for the good of the whole. Its only legitimate ends are to secure justice for all. The rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by the state and shall be preserved inviolate by the state. Due process of law, section two is due process of law. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property except by due process of law. Section three is right to individual dignity. No person shall be denied the equal protection of the laws. Slavery and involuntary servitude are prohibited, except in the latter case as punishment for crime. There's clear evidence that the origination and authorship of the ordinance that created this EDD was by the mayor president or on his behalf and is inconsistent with the home rule charter for the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government, which clearly specifies that the council has legislative power, not the mayor president. This EDD was not originated by the people. This EDD was not authorized or approved by the people. This governing board was not originated by the people. The members of this governing board were not elected by the people. And the levy of a tax without a vote of the people is involuntary servitude and slavery. It is a violation of our rights and of the constitution. This board has no authority or power to levy a tax. It's been said that this district is not under the authority of the city or parish but it's created under state authority. Well, our Declaration of Rights says that the enumeration, rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by the state and shall be preserved inviolate by the state. Our first declared right is government originates on the will of the people. How do we know what the will of the people is? The election ballot records. The state cannot authorize any governing body without the consent of the governed. It's our first declared right and other rights declared excuse me, and other declared rights are right to property and all unenumerated rights are reserved to the people. I'm here to defend the rights of my neighbors because I'll paraphrase Martin Luther King Jr. An injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. At some point, my rights are gonna be affected. And if I want to preserve my rights, I need to defend my neighbor's rights. And that's why I'm here tonight. Thank you. No other speakers, Mr. Chair. Jeremy Reed, item number six. Board action. Adopt a resolution of the board authorizing the levy and collection of a 1% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property 
and on sales of services within the boundaries of the Holy Rosary Institute Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the Holy Rosary Institute Economic Development District commencing July 1st, 2020 and otherwise providing with respect thereto. I need a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Naki and second by Ms. Cook. Board discussion? I see none. Public comments? Michael Lunsford. As far as I can tell, this district has nothing in it to tax. There's, there's no base for a sales tax. I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know how in the world you're going to pay as you go on this one. I'm just, I'm baffled by why this is even on here. But um, you know, I mean, is, is that is it valid to ask the question? What? Where are you going to collect sales tax from? Where are you going to collect a hotel tax? There's not a hotel. There's not a. There's not any retail operations there. That's just an odd one to me. This one. This is one of two that are kind of bizarre. And if you don't plan to bond a future potential project, I, I don't know how this gets done. And one other thing I, I wanted to mention. I thought I'd get to speak last on these. Uh, the last one I didn't. Miss Cornet, just as a reminder to you guys, received 1.5 million dollars in taxpayer money from this council just a few months ago. So just a reminder of that. Thank you all so much. I'll be back on the next one. Mr. Oh, Lumpf, I have a question. Yes, yes sir. You are saying that on this particular EDD, mm -hmm. you're saying that there's no way to collect sales tax, that, if I'm understanding you correctly? I, I just I looked at the map, and I don't know that there's a store in this district. I don't know that there's a retail operation there. Is there one? Did, did someone say there is one? OK. Well, I, I don't know. what. I mean, there's a strip mall there, and I think there's a few other stores. I just Holy want to make sure I'm clear what okay. you're saying. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks. I'm, yeah, I, have right. a, I well, just we'll, want to make sure. I'll be watching it. Um, yeah. Hopefully, y'all will put together a legislative auditor's annual report, and I'll be able to look and see how much that generates. I don't, I don't imagine a family dollar at one cent is going to do a whole lot, but we'll see. See y'all on the next one. Okay, thank you. No other speakers, Mr. Chair. Ms. Cook. Uh, yes. Is there someone actually that could come just speak to the Holy Rosary? Uh, does someone? Okay. Come on up. I just, yeah, I want to clear what, what Mr. Lunford's, his questions. <clears throat> My name is Skyra Rito. I sit on the board of the Holy Rosary Development Perfect. Board. Um, we have been working for a few years now on the redevelopment of that school. It is a historic site. Um, it's actually an endangered historic building. Um, and it was one of the first African-American schools in the state of Louisiana um, before it was even legal to educate African-Americans within this state. So um, we've been working for a very long time. Um, the state of Louisiana actually just awarded us some federal, some dollars um, to, to work towards redevelopment of the school and um, the board has been working for a very long time with the community development department here at LCG on some federal funding as well. So we're excited to work with you all and this board to continue to redevelop that site, um, to attract tourism, to bring redevelopment and revitalization not only to the school but to the neighborhood that is attached to it as well. Um, and that's kind of what we've been doing for the past few years. So, Okay, thank you. That's thank I just you. wanted to hear that. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Have a vote to for the adoption of this resolution. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? No. Cook? Yes. Bazaar? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ms. V, anyone signed to speak? No, sir. The special meeting has, uh, has been adjourned. Be our last special meeting. No, we have two more. Okay. Norway EDD board. Jeremy, call the roll, please. Lewis? Yes. Nakia? Here. Yes. Hebert? Cook? Uh, here. Lazard? Uh, still here. <laughs> uh, we have a quorum. Well, I was giving one more, you see, too. Yeah. Board nominations of officers. Jeremy, read, please. 
Board action, nomination of officers. Okay, thank you. This is a public hearing and blue sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the board. Need a nomination on Nordway Economic Development Board, a chair. Mr. Lazar has been nominated. Any uh, board discussion? I see none. Public comment? Call for the vote. Lewis? Lazar. Nakan? Lazard. Cook? Lazard. Lazard is appointed chair. Norway Economic Development Board of Directors Vice Chair. Uh, Lewis has been nominated for Vice Chair. Board discussion? I see none. Public comments? No, sir. Call for the vote for Vice Chair. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Lewis. Cook? Lewis. Lazard? Lewis. Lewis is appointed Vice Chair. Nomination for Norway EDD Board of Directors 2020 Secretary Treasurer. That would be Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Cook has been nominated. Board discussion? See no discussion. Public comment? No, sir. Let's get a vote. Secretary Treasurer. Lewis? Ms. Cook? Nakan? Cook. Cook? Cook. Lazard? Cook. Cook is appointed Secretary Treasurer. Jeremy Reed, number four, please. Board action, a resolution of the board electing officers and otherwise providing with respect thereto. Okay. Motion is second to consideration adoption for this resolution. Moved by Mr. Aknakin, second by Ms. Cook. Motion is second to amend the resolution to include the names of the newly elected officers. So moved by Mr. Lazar, second by Ms. Cook. Board discussion, I see none. Public comment on amendment? No, sir. Vote to amend the resolution. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Discussion Motion on resolution. Amend, amend is approved. Discussion on resolution as amended. I see none. Public comment as on resolution as amended. No, sir. Vote to adopt as amended. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to adopt as amended is approved. Jeremy, read item number five. Public hearing? Public hearing on the Northway Economic Development District's intent to levy and collect a 1% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property and on sales of services within the boundaries of the Northway Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the Northway Economic Development District commencing July 1st, 2020 and otherwise providing with respect thereto and the resolution providing for the same introduced at the January 2nd, 2020 board meeting. Public comments. Chairman Reed, item number six. Well, we do have you public, have public comment. comment. Okay. Yeah. We do. We had three citizens who did not wish to speak who signed in specifically to support the Northway uh, EDD. We have uh, first speaker, Brandon Shelvin, and he will be followed by Lydia Romero. Good evening, guys um, and lady. I promise I won't be before you Thank long. You. Because uh, I really get nervous in these seconds. I've never spoken in front of a crowd like this before. And, um, <laughs> and I cannot imagine what you guys are going through right now. Uh, but nevertheless, listen, at the end of the day, guys, it's real simple. It's not a Democratic Republican issue. It's not a black, white, rich, poor. Uh, it's a matter of taking an area that's been distressed socioeconomically and improving it. Listen, guys. When your constituents, and, and Andy, we've talked about this several times when we went to council together, when your constituents call you for an RFS, which is a request for service, they don't actually your voting record on abortion and gun law. They want their ditches clean. They want their potholes filled. They want better drainage, better roads, better infrastructure. They don't care about policies and who you voted for for presidency. None of that matters at this point, guys. What we're trying to improve is the, is the aesthetics, aesthetics of an area that has been neglected for so many years. Do y'all realize that's not a Raising Cane's on the north side? Do y'all realize that's not a Smoothie King on the north side? And there is no TIF at Costco. Why do I know that? I got a little bit of inside information. I voted on the corporate welfare for Costco. It wasn't a TIF. 
There were tax allowances and credits and forbearances that we allowed Costco to get, which was already a multi-billion dollar company. Gordon Square was purchased pennies on the dollar because of special tax credits. We did a curb cut for Academy on Louisiana Avenue because we wanted to make sure that the people that was attending Academy and those places would be able to turn easier. We put a curb cut at Correct Farms on Pont de Mouton. The council paid for that so that the parents that are dropping their kids at Lafayette Renaissance Charter Academy would be able to turn easier and not have to go past it and make a loop. Better safety. We have, as a council, provided corporate and governmental welfare throughout this parish. This is not what this is. This is allowing stakeholders and people not only living in that area, but outside of that area that comes and drive their vehicles on our roads and use our infrastructure and put their carbon imprint onto that area and allows them an opportunity to help rebuild that area up. That's what's going on right here, ladies and gentlemen. Not corporate welfare, not government welfare, not a matter of trust. It's a matter of taking this area that has been neglected for so many years and allowing allowing it to have a fair shot, a fair chance at growing this economy, growing its economy right there, growing its economic footprint, and allowing businesses to come there and grow, allowing kids that grew up in that area to possibly have a place to go get a job versus going to the south side of Lafayette or maybe going to Houston or going to Atlanta to find a job. Guys, it's one Lafayette. Not north, south, east, west. It's one Lafayette. And at the end of the day, Councilman Nakan, I think he kind of misunderstood what Takuna talked about. It's not about black people being taxed. It's not about the poor being taxed. It's about allowing people that's going to come there and use Lafayette's oldest infrastructure, which is on the north side, and allow them to be stakeholders in that and allowing them to help build that area up. So at the end of the day, um, I urge you guys, which I hope you're going to do, uh, and probably it's going to probably be three to one again, uh, <laughs> to go on voting this. And once again, I want to leave by saying this. Uh, I want to thank you guys uh, personally for your hard work, your determination, and the thankless amount of hours that you guys are going to put in these next four years for this constituency base. So. Good luck in the future, guys. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Shelby, you yes, talk sir. about the curb at the correct form. Who, yeah. who installed those curbs? Uh, Lafayette Consolidated Government. Mm -hmm. I voted for it. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy, were you on the council then? Van Andy voted for that too. Did he Andy supported safety. that. Were public you on the safety. At public safety. You on the board with the Costco? Public safety. No. You weren't voted, uh, against voted against Costco. You're right, but it passed. But you but, said something about Costco, about the curb. That's what I, I want to get out. Yeah, See, no, Cost Costco was not the curb cut. Okay. Correct Farms. That's what I'm, I'm sorry. Was the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Costco was that multi billion dollar right, company that they paid millions of dollars for right. they really didn't need it. Right. Right. <laughs> so, how do you want your council to vote on this? I would like my council member, Pat Lewis, to vote yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lydia Romero, followed by Leonard Viltz. My name is Lydia Romero. Um, I want to say this is not. My opposition is not based on political party. It's not based on black or white, rich or poor. It's based on natural inalienable rights. As a reminder, you all have been told, although you've all been told that you're acting as non-council members, the fact of the matter is you wouldn't be on this board if you weren't a council member and bound by oath as such. You've given the oath, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution and laws of this state and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me to the best of my ability and understanding. This EDD was quoted, created, unquote, by the former council, but that council was bound by the Home Rule Charter for the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government. And Article 1, Section 1 states the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government operates under a home rule charter and subject to said charter is authorized as hereinafter provided. And in section 105, 
The city parish government specifically shall have and, his, and is hereby granted the right and authority to exercise any power and perform any function necessary, requisite or proper for the management of its affairs, not inconsistent with the constitution. This is your oath to honor the laws of the state and the constitution. The Louisiana constitution declares in article one declaration of rights, origin and purpose of government. All government of right originates with the people. It's founded on their will alone and is instituted to protect the rights of the individual and for the good of the whole. It's only legitimate ends are to secure justice for all. The rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by the state and shall be preserved inviolate by the state. Due process of law is no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property. Right to individual dignity, no person shall be denied the equal protection of the laws. Slavery and involuntary servitude are prohibited. It's clear, there's clear evidence that the origination and authorship of the ordinance that created this EDD was by the mayor president or on his behalf and it was inconsistent with the Home Rule Charter for the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government, which clearly specifies that the council has legislative power, not the mayor president. This economic development district was not originated by the people. It was not approved or authorized by the people. This governing board was not originated by the people, and no one on this board was elected by the people. The levy of a tax without a vote of the people is involuntary servitude and slavery. It is a violation of our rights and the state constitution. This board has no power to levy a tax. It's been said that this district is not under the city or parish authority. It's created under state authority. Well, state, the state is bound by our constitution. And our first declaration is the rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by the state and shall be preserved inviolate by the state. And our, for also within our first declared right, it's stated government originates on the will of the people. How do we know what the will of the people is? The election ballot records. The state cannot authorize any governing body without the consent of the governed. It's our first declared right and other rights and other declared rights are right to property and all unenumerated rights are reserved to the people. Short quote from a man who's known as the, the um, father of the constitution of the United States. In an essay called Property, he wrote, it is not a just government, nor is property secure under it, where the property which a man has in his personal safety and personal liberty is violated by arbitrary seizures of one class of citizens for the service of the rest. Please vote no. Thank you. Leonard Viltz, final speaker. Leonard Viltz, Youngsville. Uh, what I like about this uh, district, uh, it covers Moss Street. I like Moss Street, Moss Street has a lot of potential. Uh, it has a lot of vacant lots, uh, businesses. Uh, I think it has the potential of being a self-sustaining corridor. Uh, you can shop for food, uh, hardware. Um, I know that you, a long time ago, but there used to be a, a movie theater so that this has the potential of having uh, Moss Street like it used to be a long time ago. And also, for instance, um, the tourism numbers are up. So for instance, at the beginning of, of the parade, which is at the, uh, near uh, Sterling Grove by Jefferson and Millmore Street, a lot of times the uh, parade gets congested and people can't go downtown because there's just a, a, so much people, so many people. Well, what they can do, they can head down Moore Street and we can collect some tax dollars from the tourism industry. As people visit the city, if they can't make it downtown, they can head down uh, Moss Street and spend some money. And also we can use that money to reinvest into that area and make it look presentable to where it'll attract even more people in the future. So I support this and I think this is a good area. Uh, and also there's a bridge over Moss Street that's being repaired as well. So uh, there's a lot of potential in Moss Street and I think this is a good thing. I support this. Thank you. No more speakers? No other speakers. Uh, Mr. Lazar. You have the floor. I'll pass. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's vote to adopt this resolution. This is the public hearing. We'll, we'll move on to item number six, which is the resolution. Okay. Item number six. Hey, Jeremy, please leave. Board action, adopt a resolution of the board authorizing the levy and collection of a 1% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, 
The lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property and on sales of services within the boundaries of the Northway Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the Northway Economic Development District commencing July 1st, 2020 and otherwise providing with respect thereto. Need a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. So moved. moved by Ms. Cooks, second by Ms. Uh, Lazar. Any board discussion? I see any, none. Public comment? Michael Lunsford. Well, this one I have done a little bit of research on. And so I don't know if you want to follow along, but I'll, I'll work through here. The first section I identified that was a series of LLCs that created a new LLC for the specific purpose of the Northway Economic Development District. And those members are included uh, in the next three pages. I've also included a letter I received from uh, Mr. Ford explaining uh, a lawsuit for uh, some Medicaid issues that his company had. Um, and I wanted to point out, I have these highlighted, John Ford, ownership of Angel Manor. I have that because it's not listed. It's another LLC that's the owner. So I wanted to point that out. Mr. Mike. Yes. I do respect, is this, con you know, really to get our attention to vote for this or not? Someone yes, that's sir. on this board. Would you want to know that the folks that you're well, voting to give I mean, money to are honorable I'd or not? Yeah. Continue, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Department of Health and Hospitals sought $204,000. Uh, they ended up settling for $126,000. The bottom, it includes three names, John Ford, Royal Hill, and Ravis Martinez. Um, I wanted to bring your attention to Royal Hill in a moment. But Angel Point Development, I, I also wanted to point out, is a potential uh, conflict of interest with an attorney, an assistant attorney, Mike Abair's firm represents that organization, which is also John Ford's organization. That's on the next page. I highlighted Becker and Bear, who he is the Bear of Becker and Bear. That's number one and number two, a potential conflict of interest in my opinion. Of course, you've got a bunch of attorneys here that could point to that or not. The next page, I wanted to point out that Royal Hill is the center's manager with the Parks Department of Lafayette Consolidated Government. Mr. And Mike, uh, I just want to interrupt you one more time. Uh -huh. Do you know that EDD is not giving any money to the third party? Well, why are they on the uh, cooperative well, they're not giving money. They have they're to not apply. giving money? They're hmm? not giving any money to third parties. They have to apply for it. I understand, but you're levying a tax for the purposes of giving money to a third party. Hmm. Is that not the case? Is that not what this tax is for? Mr. Landry, can you address that, please? I have to say it one more time. You make a decision to who you're giving money to. The fact that the sponsor, the party who is a part of the CEA that's going to help coordinate this, help facilitate this, doesn't mean they get paid a dime. They are a party for what they said they wanted to do is to come up with a plan to make the area better. It is up to you to decide whether you want to give money to them, to this gentleman, or someone else to do good projects. You are not required to give anybody anything under these uh, cooperative endeavor agreements. So again, the third party is not getting the money. They have to apply like a developer or that, anyone that's else. That's precisely right. So if, if anything that happens, they have to come to the board for. That's correct. Same is true for the Downtown Development Authority. Same is true for the developer at Trapeze. N nobody under these documents are entitled to a dime. They are here to help facilitate these projects. As you could hear, they're already working on it, and it's up to you to decide what, when, where, how, and why. So to suggest that these people are entitled to something is just misleading you. Thank you. Continue. Well, I'll bring your attention to the next page, which uh, actually, if you flip through to the second page, this is a uh, request that Kenneth Boudreaux sent to the Board of Ethics asking whether or not he was allowed to uh, be employed at the Sheriff's Office and also as a council member. I think it's relevant. The second page, Revised Statute 42.1112A says, 
it prohibits a public servant from participating in any transaction in which he has a personal substantial economic interest. So I would consider Mr. Hill uh, as potentially participating in a transaction that, that gives him a personal substantial economic interest. Uh, further, it says any legal entity in which the public service exercises control of or owns interest in excess of 25%, which there are three members, he would be 33%, it exceeds 25%. Um, also, RS 4211221 says this also includes a special district, which this is a special district. And I'll be submitting uh, this to the board for a, uh, a request for more information and a preliminary. Um, but I just wanted to let you know, haven't had a lot of time. I'm going to continue to dig into these. And as these things come out and as information is made available, I'm trying to be in, uh, out in front of this, I'm trying to explain what I'm working on and what I'm digging into so that you have a little bit better idea. I had hoped by now we would have established a pattern of let's wait, let's talk to the public, let's have some real town hall meetings and not at, what time is it? 10 o'clock at night. You know, this is why nobody's here. Anyway, all right, I'll be back. Any more speakers? Let's vote. Uh, okay, I need a vote from the board to adopt this resolution. Lewis? Yes. Okay. No. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Public comment? Do you yes, anyone sir. sign to speak? Okay. Adjourn this special meeting. Trappe EDD board. Call to order the EDD. Jeremy, please call the roll. Lewis? Here. Nakan? Yes. Hebert? Yes. Cook? Here. Lazard? Still here. We have a quorum. Jeremy, please read. Board action, nomination of officers. This is a public hearing and blue sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the board. I need a nomination for a Traffic Economic Development Board of Directors 2020 Chair. Okay, Cook has been nominated. Board discussion, I see none. Public comment, vote for a 2020 chair. Lewis? Cook. Nakan? Cook. Cook? Lazard? Cook. Cook is appointed chair. <laughs> Nomination for Trappe Economic Development Board of Directors 2020 Vice Chair. Okay, Lazar has been nominated for vice chair. Board discussion, I see none. Public comments, vote for 2020 vice chair. Lewis. Lazar. Nakan. Lazard. Cook. Lazard. Lazard. Lazard has been appointed. Nomination for Trap A EDD Board of Directors 2020 Secretary Treasurer. I'll nominate Ms. Cook. Oh. Your turn. Mr. Nakin, you're not on any board. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think Lois should be the winner. Okay, Lois. Lois has been nominated for treasurer. Any board discussion? Public comments? No, sir. Vote for 2020 Secretary Treasurer. Lewis? Lewis. Nakan? Lewis. Cook? Lewis. Lazard? Lewis. Lewis has been appointed 2020 Secretary Treasurer. Jeremy Reed, item four. Board action, a resolution of the board electing officers and otherwise providing with respect thereto. Motion is second to consider that adoption of resolution number R-006, Trappe. Moved by Ms. Cook, second by Mr. Nakane. Motion is second to amend the resolution to include the names of the newly elected officers. Moved. 
Moved by Mr. Lazar, second by Ms. Ms. Cook. Board discussion? I see none. Public comments on amendment? There is none. Vote to amend the resolution. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to amend is approved. Board discussion on amendment? I see none. Public comment on resolution is amended. No, sir. Call for the vote to adopt as amended. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? Yes. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to adopt as amended is approved. Chairman, please read item five. Public hearing. Public hearing on the Trape Economic Development District's intent to levy and collect a 2% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property and on sales of services within the boundaries of the Trape Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the Trape Economic Development District commencing July 1st, 2020 and otherwise providing with respect thereto and the resolution providing for the same introduced at the January 2nd, 2020 board meeting. Public comments. Steven Ortega, he passes. Lydia Romero. Hello, my name's Lydia Romero. As a reminder, although you've all been told you're acting as non-council members, the fact that of the matter is you wouldn't be on this board if you weren't a council member and bound by an oath as such. You've each given the oath, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the constitution and laws of this state and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me to the best of my ability and understanding. This economic development district was, quote, created, unquote, by the former council, but the council was bound by the Home Rule Charter for the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government. Article 1, Section 1 of the, says the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government operates under a Home Rule Charter and subject to said charter is authorized as hereinafter provided. And in Section 105, the City Parish Government specifically shall have and is hereby granted the right and authority to exercise any power and perform any function necessary, requisite, or proper for the management of its affairs, not inconsistent with the Constitution. The Louisiana Constitution declares in Article I, Declaration of Rights, Origin and Purpose of Government. All government of right originates with the people, is founded on their, their will alone, and is instituted to protect the rights of the individual and for the good of the whole. Its only legitimate ends are to secure justice for all. The rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by, inalienable by the state and shall be preserved inviolate by the state. Section two is titled Due Process of Law. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property. Section three is right to individual dignity. Section three reads, no person shall be denied the equal protection of the laws. Slavery and involuntary servitude are prohibited. There's clear evidence that the origination and authorship of the ordinance that created this EDD was by the mayor president or on his behalf, and it was inconsistent with the Home Rule Charter for the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government, which clearly specifies that the council has legislative power and not the mayor president. This EDD was not originated by the people. It was not authorized or approved by the people. The members of this governing board were not elected by the people. The levy of a tax without a vote of the people is involuntary servitude and slavery. It's a violation of our rights and the state constitution. This board has no authority or power to levy a tax. It's been said that this district is not under the city or parish authority. Um, it's created under state authority. Well, our declaration of rights, um, article one, section one, the rights enumerated in this article are inalienable by the state and shall be preserved and violent by the state. Our first declared right as also government originates on the will of the people. How do we know what the will of the people is? The election ballot records. The state cannot authorize any governing body the power to tax without the consent of the governed. It's our first declared right, another declared rights, our right to property, and all unenumerated rights are reserved to the people. I ask that you all honor your oath. Obey the charter, obey the constitution, do not 
vote to levy a tax. Thank you. No other speakers. No other speakers? Okay. Jeremy, please read item number six. Board action, adopt a resolution of the board authorizing the levy and collection of a 2% sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease or rental, the consumption and storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property and on sales of services within the boundaries of the Trappe Economic Development District and a 2% hotel occupancy tax within the boundaries of the Trappe Economic Development District commencing July 1st, 2020 and otherwise providing with respect thereto. Motion is second to adapt, adopt the resolution. So moved. moved by Mr. Lazar, second by Ms. Cook. Board discussion, I see none. Public comment. Michael Lunsford. It's another one of these mysterious ones I haven't had a chance to dig into a whole lot. I just know that it's an operation out of New Orleans. So I'm not really sure who's involved and what, what the deal is. But I will ask you, since I have this last opportunity to speak, what is it that the folks of Lafayette have asked you for over and over and over again, some of you for four years? Transparency. They've been asking for, well, they've been asking for transparency, if, sure. And, and I remember uh, Mr. Conk at one point was frustrated because there were so many secret meetings and um, they shouldn't be happening. So this is a question I have for you. For the last two years, according to Ms. Begno, this has been a plan. This has been going on. No one knew about it. The people in Lafayette, they just want their potholes filled. They just want the drainage to work. It's been four years since the 2016 flood. What has been done to address the flooding problems in Lafayette? You raise the tax, you, you move some money around. What, what has been done? What is actually, if, if we were to see another event again, like we did in August of 16, would that be enough? Do you have an engineer that's certified that this is done, that, that we've actually done something? But for two years, this, this stuff has been going on, planning on giving tax dollars to developers, according to Mr. Landry. I just think that um, we, we have a limited amount of gray matter, we have a limited amount of time. Should we be focusing on the things that people want or should we be focusing on helping developers build things? And that's all I have this evening, thank you so much. Appreciate that comment, Mr. Lunkford. You are, you are absolutely correct. That's what a lot of the citizens are asking for, potholes to be filled, ditches to be clean, and so forth. And there's a lot of people that are having uh, issues with flooding in the area. But this has, you know, people that's putting this together has any, nothing to do with the potholes being filled or stopping potholes from being filled. This is a different uh, group of people that have been putting things together. When you need the potholes to be filled and, and uh, ditches to be cleaned at part of the administration, that's his particular job or her job. So this is, you know, something a little bit totally different what you are saying. Well, I see my meter's still running, so I hope you don't mind. I'll come back real quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm um, is that call. okay? My meter's still running. Is that yeah. is that acceptable? Okay. I'll give you another couple of seconds. Th this isn't anybody else in this room. This mm -hmm. isn't any of the, the special interests that have come here to ask you to give them money. Mm -hmm. This is you guys. This is your vote. They have no say so. That's why they're here begging you for the money. That's why they're here. And yeah, they've been planning this, but I understand some of the council members have known about this for some time. I don't know if it was two years, but I know it's been planned for two years and I just think it's a shame. You know, we should be focusing, I think, on the priorities that the people are interested in. So. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you again, sir. No other speakers, Mr. Chair. No other speaker. No other speaker? Okay. Need a motion and second to adapt the resolution. So moved. Moved by Mr. Lazar. Second, second by Ms. Cook. Board discussion. See none. Public comment. No further public comment. Forward from the board to adopt the resolution. Lewis? Yes. Nakan? No. Cook? Yes. Lazard? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. V, anybody signed to speak? Public no, comment? Sir. Join the special meeting. Good night. Good night. <laughs>